would it be absolutely the worst thing in the world if we had one of those situations where we begin to look at, you know, not closing either school, but just but having children attend yeah, school yeah. in a different the, building? Yeah, what I'm saying so is that little, so in right. one grade, Rochester is Rochester, or whatever, right. pre, pre K through oh, be flexible. four, yeah. three, or something. Well, you have it. I mean, work the other way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 One of the things. Yeah, could go the other way. Could go anyway. Right, that like Stockbridge was the younger grades, pre K through set three or set two, and then four, five, six, and then. How, how, how much do you value your peer group? That's what is really, you know, that's what we're really talking about. To have kids the same age to be. Able if we to could be build up our early childhood program, like the pre-K, we people. could have an early childhood well, school you and then the, the older grades. Yeah. You know, I, that article that Carl passed on about the, over where I live, the districts over there that are putting daycare in their schools with their preschool programs mm -hmm. because they yeah. have empty classrooms, and the preschool numbers are jumping through the roof. The model is, is right. sharing. They've made money every year on kids. They had they do a. A program where they have kids and then they do aftercare. Yeah. The parents pay rather than send them to a babysitter or nursery or whatever. They about. they keep them there in the school and they pay, and and they make eighty thousand, ninety thousand dollars a year on that. And every time there's a budget deficit in Sharon, we don't have any problems because. Like that money's there, yeah. you know, to cover it. Although I think that, that it's important that we we they they, they don't make eighty thousand dollars. They are able to afford an extra at least an extra FTE or another, exactly. or another right. person. Yeah. There's yeah. more I think it's yeah. I, I think it's important that when we think about how we're framing our conversations, we try to think about the opportunities and the resources and the expectations and not the costs and the taxes, because that's you know when 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 we start talking about you know we're spending eighteen thousand dollars a kid, you know we're throwing a pinto at every child every year. <laughs> it becomes a it, it frames things in, in, a, in a whole different in, 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 in a whole different you're right uh, you know this argument. Is, this is I mean look at this. These are the broad really great right. I mean you know, the last time in Stockbridge and this was a few principles ago. We, when we felt that we were in a place that we could have this kind of conversation, what we talked about as goals for curriculum and, and, and faculty was, was, well, first of all, at the time, you know, we, again, we were always multi-age classrooms, so we wanted a two-year curricular cycle, so that the idea that, you know, whether it was more on environment one year and more on like state history the other year, but the, the idea that the kids wouldn't be repeating material in, in, in the same classroom. So having a, 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 a two-year curriculum cycle, but then really trying to reach out and understand what the schools that were receiving our seventh, our, our, our you know rising seventh graders were finding deficits. You know, was it about literacy? Was it about communication that? and speaking yeah, and presentation? So I thought at some you point know, we had talked about yeah, we tracking our kids. As right. So we need to. I think you know again as we. As you start implementing Lotus, Lotus, Otis, Otis. Bruce, you know we could be trying to, to 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 get some of that feedback in there because, you know, we talk about when we talk about how you know the kids aren't doing well going to college, you know that's that's not even I mean yes it's our problem because we're their we're their we're their 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 local education authority, but really what we need to be thinking about in terms of the focus of our schools is just getting the kids. So that if they choose to go to seventh grade at the Sheridan Academy or Woodstock or Randolph or, or the, wherever they pick or, or White River Tech, I mean, you know, they, they're, they're successful. Yeah. They're yeah. Right, they're right. Well, Otis, uh, we're going to have a training. Uh, we talked to the Otis people yesterday. We're going to have a training with the principals on uh, next Wednesday. We have loaded in it uh, the latest Star 360 scores. We have the uh, state uh, test, uh, the uh, SBAC tests. They're all loaded. We, have, we want to put in some uh, other uh, evaluations that we've talked about, uh, PNOA and, and POA, uh, that's math and, and uh, what is it, primary uh, operations, operations, uh, operations. That's, what, that's what that stands for. And we've identified exactly the tests, tests that we want to, or the assessments that we want to put in there. The main thing about Otis is just knowing who those kids are and getting what they, getting them right. what they need, uh, and that's the purpose of it. It's not like anything else. I mean, we're not reporting stuff out to the state or anything. Right. No. No. I just think it's important for, it, it, for us to be able to use that tool 
to track the kids just like you're going to be tracking the white, you know, the the the, the W of our RV kids, you know, mm -hmm. from from K to and, twelve. And that's a place where the board, I think, can help administrators significantly. One of the things I would just like to throw on the table is that um, when the board does their goal setting this year, they're very specific about literacy and mathematics improvement. Mm -hmm. Boom. I mean, there's other things I know you have to do, and, and it's your choice what you decide to pick for your goals. But one of the things I think is beneficial to a school system and some of those school systems where you see academic progress is where this academic progress goal starts at the board level and works its way all the way down. So Lindy and I would be asking teachers, when you put in your individual goals, please make sure one has to do with improving the academic, the uh, mathematical understanding and the literary understanding of the youngsters in your class. Because then it's, <laughs> I had a teacher tell me once that they couldn't they couldn't do extra inter the extra intervention that a youngster needed, and this was in our district. They couldn't do the extra intervention that a youngster needed because the parents did not want the youngster pulled out of any activity that everybody else was doing, and the board supported that. Well, then there is no time in the day to do intervention because other youngsters are involved in activities every minute of the day. Yeah, but so, that, that's but it could all be a push change. In instead of a pull out. It could that, be, but this child needed even more than that, Jane. But, so my only can, point was, go ahead. We can show that they're gaining progress. You will have to, you will have to change, keep them away with wild horses, the parents, from exactly. wanting that achievement. Once they can see it, you okay, know. Okay, the same way I'm going to say to you, the, and, I, and I go by the data and the research, Everybody can be really, really excited about this. If they don't see success within the first six weeks, it goes away. It goes away. Right. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm most convinced that with our lowest kids, they are not going to see any more success with this. Are there in program tests with FMP? There aren't, from what I could see. There's benchmark assessments. There's benchmark, benchmark assessments. And we're going to load. Real. We're going to load those into Otis too. Okay. That's part. So of we'll be able to see how they're doing within the program. Mm -hmm. We're going to have it. I didn't want to have just one test, one thing. No. You know, we need to see them from a lot of different sides, but. If you can show parents that their kids are improving, that their grade, you know, being on grade level or approach to grade level is, is coming along, they can't help but wanting oh, to, want to watch their you kids build it, they'll be come. successful. Speaking of which, can we think about putting a column at the end of that that said Hancock, Granville, and Pittsfield? and tracking what, what their population is, because when we think about our potential students and our uh, student counts, yeah. those are the three towns that, 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 that send us. And if we're talking about, if our goal is to build a quality and attractive uh, you know, educational program, we should, you know, when we think about the resources that we that that that, that, that we could be able to, to, to pull on, you know, it, it it would be those children. I mean, when we say, okay, how can we how can we gain or how can we maintain uh, enrollment, you know, managing or or, or 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 courting or putting together something that draws in, you know, if we have an attractive program, those that's who we're gonna. Yeah. Do you know, Carl? Pull in. If Stockbridge used to have more Pittsfield. There's only a handful oh, yeah. right now. Oh. Yeah, we used to have. I mean, yeah. it, 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 it went in waves. There used to be yeah. a number of, of 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 Pittsfield kids that came there. A lot of it had to do, I think. It seems like it has to do with parental, which way the right. parents right. go. Right. Yeah. We had a lot of parents from Pittsfield that were coming towards Bethel and towards 89, and so those there was a whole wave of kids that went to Stockbridge and then to Sharon Academy. Yeah. But, but there was know. also that personal, I mean, when I lived here the first time, it was the Pittsfield-Stockbridge school. We yeah. held it together, we did it together, and then there was some falling out between the two towns, and Pittsfield took away, and we, it's, you know, it's just marketing, folks. It's marketing. Yeah, it's that's what we have to do. Yeah, we yeah. show yeah. our good yeah. side. Well, well, then the this, yeah, this is way. this but seems Killington to me is not that good. But going so going back. That's not on tape. <laughs> <laughs> It is. Yeah, <laughs> going back to because I, I was there for their special ed. I mean, they put a kid in a wrong program for the whole summer without ever realizing they did. This is Killington. We could get, well, we could get I, these kids. I think, I think it is marketing. We, we, definitely need, we definitely need to do with marketing. There's definitely, definitely some yes. things I think we could do. Because these are the givens. 
to improve our program, but one grandmother this summer really told me something that opened up my eyes. She's losing three or four grandchildren. They're not going to stay in Rochester. And she said the reason is Rochester is a very difficult town for young families. There is no place to work. Or right, to buy a house. Right, right. That you can't, don't have to try. So they're going north of Waitsfield, and one of the other families is going over to Middlebury. Um, so we need the market, but we also need to be realistic. It is a difficult place for young families. Yep. And most of the kids, as far as I know, every child at Rochester is losing this summer is all about employment, because I've had conversations with the parents or grandparents about why they're leaving. And most of them are very sad to leave, but employment is what's forcing them out. Well, now, so let's go back to that. Why employers will move if there's good exactly. schools, right. and it's people all will move there. So it's kind of like, well, okay. I, like, I think we actually have a changing demographic in our valley. I think Granville, I joke around that I call it South Warren, now just like Pittsfield has kind of become a Killington more mm -hmm. town. And I don't think those towns, those, those people that are moving down from like the Med River Valley to our valley, they don't they acknowledge that they're even in a different valley anymore, um, but they don't even look at our schools. The, right. Do you think, and I don't think, the well, Pillington well, folks who well, are living in Pittsfield, they're not looking at Stockbridge, and we need to make it, we need, they need to know what we have. Right. Well, and it's like, that's what I'm saying, like, the, all this stuff is wonderful, but these are like the givens of what a school should be doing. Yeah. And of course, we're starting from pretty close to zero in a lot of ways, or at least, you know, 10 or 20 out of 100. So yes, this is the stuff we're marching forward for, but it sounds like the marketing stuff is about stuff we haven't really spent much time on, like outdoor education was a big thing in the thing. You know, we've got this yeah. whole thing in Rasta, the Rasta what they're doing. Connection. I mean, yeah. that's the kind of, those are the kind of buzzwords that I think are gonna bring people in if it's a really integrated part of the curriculum and not just something we're, you know, well, maybe, maybe on, I also think is single-handedly supporting on her own. There's, there's that, but I also think that the good things that we're doing, no matter what they are, need to be publicized, need well, to be yeah, in the right, paper. Yeah. I, th I think the one know. biggest thing we need to work on in terms of a marketing message, I think that's a very savvy group of parents now, people who are checking things online and looking for this and that. You go online and you see our assessment data. I wouldn't necessarily right. put our schools at the well, top. Even if you just look at our website. Our website, yeah. <laughs> we our need website. to get some resources yeah. behind that. But I do think that our, our achievement data is one of the bigger things that's standing in our way of being right. a very yes. attractive school. Mm -hmm. I read in a book once that we should look at our achievement data in such a way that um, if you went to a physician and the sign over his or her door said, 46% of my patients don't make it, would you go to that doctor? And the answer is no, none of us would. Who would right. go to that? Physician. When I sold my house in New York, the real estate dealer said to me, what, tell me what district is, do they go to school? That was the mm -hmm. only thing that right. she wanted to know. What district do your kids go to school? Mm -hmm. And when it was a good district, mm -hmm. that's what's all that. Well, and down there, all they see in the, on the internet is the good school ratings, you know? Right. Yeah. And how do they get them? Well, you know, all the realtors use them, and all, the, all mm -hmm. a lot of it has to do with test scores, mm -hmm. you know? It, it all has it to do, that's what they see. That's all they see, so, they don't see the outcome. So one of the things that we're gonna do, I'll tell you, I'll yeah. tell you this right yeah. now, is each one of the, each, each one of the schools on the opening day, if I could get these done in time, is gonna have a banner over the front door that says Raising Readers. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna shift them around. They're all gonna have a little different different saying. And after about five weeks, we'll we'll trade banners with one of the other schools, and and they'll get a new one. It's kind of like a a poor man's uh, message board, <laughs> I guess you want to say. But but we have to tell people what the initiative is, what we're working on, what we're trying to do. And I'm hoping we'll get a little airtime for some of those pictures you know of of them but you know w w i'm talking to the principals about marketing this yeah how do we tell people what we're trying to do and no the scores aren't there yet they will be there i'm i'm confident they'll be there but they're not there yet and uh, how much time do we have before people start like stockbridge people start saying that's it. I'm done supporting this empty high school. You know, I'm just saying, yeah. and I think it's how we well, we, have, it, we have our... I don't think we're at a point what, where we can is, make decisions about these buildings yet. We have until, let's see, two more years. We have three more years before we're supposed to have that five-year yeah, conversation, conversation about, about, about yeah. where we are. Um, 
Bennett. So I mean, there, that's that's pretty much yeah. where the, yeah. that conversation yeah. is going to be. It's, it's also it what we, how we say something, not just what we say. Exactly. I think we should prepare the community. It takes three to five years to turn a school around. Yeah. It's happened for a long time. We've been failing. I mean, my adult went all the way through all these. So you schools. never want to mention the word failing in a PR thing about turning a school around. <laughs> no, no. The, I'm dilemma, just saying, the dilemma for the board. I wish one of our elementary schools was bigger and had like an empty wing sitting there. Right. Yeah. Our dilemma is if both of our schools kind of continue to tick down and we do have to come together into one building, there's only one building big enough to do that in and that's the one building that we're trying to figure out what we do with. Yeah. That's the yeah. high school. I mean, I wish that either Stockbridge or Rochester had this wing of four classrooms sitting empty. Right, because then that would be the fallback right. when we need well, it. Well, and that's I mean that's one of the that's one of the questions. Do you do you spend the 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 the, 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 the Black River Design recommended 1.2 million dollars to expand Stockbridge, or do you say you know what if we put fifth and sixth graders in Rochester, we could we could uh, yeah. pull back that that you know a classroom there that we could be converting into the art space and the and and the nurses the the, the, the nurses space. Yeah, I mean, right. you, you know that's a question. Do we do we say okay let's move into the high school because then that gives us space to have you know a classroom one of Deb Matthews responsive classrooms because right now if if, if, if a kid in our if, if a Rochester kid wants to take advantage of that they're they're being trucked to Soto and that's we not, actually have three kids that are taking advantage oh, really? of those right but they're and they're, 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 being, and they're okay. right but I mean what the, 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 the point is we have you know we say okay well this this empty building is sitting here mothballed Again, we have to look at it and not say we've got an empty building. We've got to say we have these assets and we have to figure out how to deploy them. Yeah, right. So, so I'd like assets. to propose a bigger vision. I think we need to explore like the Head Start Montessori model because there's no realistic daycare options in either community that can house yeah. um, what we need to do. And if we get those kids in similar to what Carl shared in the art, sooner we get those families into either building or our school system, which is what mm -hmm. we are, the more likely we can Continue. keep, yeah, keep them. Through. I mean, I think that's a great opportunity for space, however you want to configure it, you know, whether, you know, you use the Stockbridge building well, for that and then you move it. I just, I see that as a great opportunity and that's also a great way to help see test scores improve exactly. because then they're provided a structured, like the Montessori model works because they're working on such important skills that some parents may not know how to do at home. Mm -hmm. So just connect those two, those two ideas. I'm just throwing things on the table, but just for us to think about, if you take Carl's idea about fifth and sixth graders at Rochester, <coughs> that would free up a room. And right. if you took Lindy's idea about the Montessori school for preschoolers and aftercare for parents who can't just drop everything at 1130 or 115 and come and right. pick kids up, that would free up a space in that building to have that for the Stockbridge area. Right. Um, the Rochester area has a building already that we could expand into aftercare if mm -hmm. if the board decided to do so. So that's kind of the kind of the dot connecting I think that can come out of these ideas we're throwing on the table. Well, well, think, does yeah, Capstone do it? Well, well what doesn't Capstone have head store? I don't know. So Fair with job. Carl's idea of, you know, the fifth and sixth graders in Rochester, we couldn't do it currently in our elementary building unless we take a class out of there, though. We would have to remove a pre, because well, as we could move the library, if, if we assume the high school was staying open, we could move the library to the high school, and that would free up a class. Because we were also discussing that the projections for our preschool next year are to be able to offer an extended day program, you need more than the one classroom that we have. So, um, that was just, one, and, one critique just, I heard, and somebody chose Stockbridge over Rochester, was the idea that I think a three year old could stay the whole day. Right, four year old. A four year old. Does, four, five days. Four year old, yeah. yeah. Talk. And then Rochester that. didn't, and it was yeah. very right. hard on working people. So I was on the board. My guess is if you did, did that, that and we went to three o'clock in the afternoon or yeah. five o'clock with aftercare, mm -hmm. our, pre our three and four year old programs are both out. I'm yeah. sure they would, yeah. which in turn help. yeah. helps yeah. on yeah. the education yeah. of our kids. Because they were, this person wanted to be in Rochester and felt they couldn't get to the time schedule. So we explored on, when I was on the Rochester board, we were explored on a kid trying to do aftercare and before care Ethan, I and, and the so dandelion yeah, day and we um, went through the Orange County is that that was who's sharing you is it Orange County yeah um, Orange County Child Center right 
Fairchild Center. Fairchild Center. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, they were, it was not feasible to do that in, the, in that daycare building. They looked at it, they really explored the possibilities, and the, the, what it boiled down to was, again, space. Because that building was licensed for 15 kids, mm -hmm. and due to a half day program and the changeover between, there would be a time that there would, could potentially be more than 15 kids. Um, and, and the aftercare. So I totally think that, I, I agree that this is probably a really good way for us to start thinking about it. Well, I think right, we right. And, and I think Lauren's an amazing resource too, because yeah. she's got that whole, who? Lauren. Oh, she's an amazing resource. Yeah. Lauren. For, to expand. She's actually, yeah. she's actually almost certified to be a director, so she could move into a different role. She is the, she's That's the fun. preschool teacher at Rochester. Yeah, the other thing, without going into a lot of detail, because I don't think the board should spend its time today on this detail, but we have a great problem to solve, but it is going to be a problem, is that we've got 13 or 14 three-year-olds coming in to our preschool in Rochester. If we continue the same expanded program that we do for four-year-olds, we would have no availability for three-year-olds, zero, not even one three-year-old. Well, I guess we could have one three-year-old that could come in the following year. So we're going to have to have more space because of this increased population, which is a wonderful problem to have, but we have to and, solve it. And I think we need to work our hardest to accommodate this, because as we're, yeah. I, you don't yeah, want the kids. kids. We don't right. want the Salama kids. We want absolutely not. Yeah. I mean, but in your communities on the other side, how do the communities feel about when the, is it Sudbury, was it Whiting, was the other one, when they split the, we great. So we're about two years ahead, three years ahead, I guess. Um, and I was the chair of their 46 unification committee, and um, we brought seven schools together under one school board. So there were seven schools. Wow. And um, actually, <laughs> <laughs> well, from what I hear about your efforts, ours weren't quite as bad. Difficult. Um, so now we're at the point of redesigning schools and we've had we had four schools that were 40 kids or under and we just simply said point blank we cannot continue to run four schools with 40 kids or under it's four roofs it's four eating plants it's three three principals we just can't do it the numbers just don't support it um so it wasn't easy for everybody but most of the people who had youngsters in school and that's another thing we have to watch for when we have public meetings we have to kind of look around and say who's here it's not that the parents everybody don't come to right no, the parents are never there. No. right the tax meeting was here yeah. right here. so um we let's see they were all k6 pre-k6 schools and now we have whiting who's just a preschool they do the aftercare they do the till five o'clock at night care sudbury is just five and six and uh, Lester is K through four. We're probably going to do additional combined. How do they year. like it now that it's they've done that? Um, I'm I'm still on the board. I'm not the chair of the board anymore because I stepped down from that, so I don't hear as much as I used to. But primarily, I only heard from five or six people who didn't like it, and and their opinions were valuable, but they were five or six people. Um, we have heard from very the few parents, parents. no, we've heard from very few parents who don't like it because this started to happen pretty yeah, quickly. Yeah. We expanded second language program, we expanded PE, um, we've got instrumental music in two, one or two schools that never had it before. Um, so we knew the minute we started to make these structural changes that opportunities had to come pretty close behind. Right because that's what we said we could do if we combined, right. and that's true. As we combine, we freed up dollars. I was just gonna mention this, but you have an opportunity right now to add language, because we just hired a phys ed teacher as a native Spanish speaker. Um, I mean, think about that, that could... Oh, you know, you I, mean, I just interviewed asked. her yesterday, she and she's... She's, she's, more than two days. she's uh, we're yeah. originally from what country? Uruguay. 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 Uh, for very stuff. bright, uh, she's going to be your phys ed teacher in Stockbridge two days a week, mm -hmm. uh, and um, I'm sure we're not paying her 
is a family that just uh, came up here from Miami. Uh, they, uh, the parents live in. Professor. She a father, of color? The father works at yes. GW Plastics. She's a teacher of color? Mm -hmm. I'm very excited. Yeah. He's a private pilot, she told us. Is that what he does for GW uh, Plastics? I don't know what he Why does. Exactly? I don't know what he does. So do we I have the money GW, to do that? No. <laughs> so Not that I know of, but it's a missed opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah it really is. We're looking at, we just have extra time in her day. So on top of like movement, we're going to do a little mini, like, 20 minute enrichment block two so days a week. She's working two days a week. And so how can we get her? We have to get her each day is about $10,000 for the year. And not happen so year. if we were to add one day a week, it would be ten, another 10,000. Two days a week, 20. And I think if we looked at all our hirings and the vacancies we've had over the summer and some staff positions, we may come close to that amount of money. Yeah, we should hire some newbies. Yeah. And we've had some couple yeah. of that would, be, that would be another thing that we bring oh, yeah, to us. Totally. That would be a yeah. huge yeah. issue. Yeah. 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 Well, if we're going to hire a second language teacher, we'd have to get into the certification oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But she certainly could do she something. Could. Right, we're right. just offering right. right. like, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. student yeah. interest. I mean, this is what we were talking about with yeah. Christine. But it yeah. begins getting that. Yeah. I don't want to oh, yeah. derail yeah. the conversation, no. but it no. just came to us. You know, she got availability. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not doing anything is, else oh, except two, teaching two days a week phys ed. Mm -hmm. So, she might so she's got three days a week probably free. And she wants to be think? more. Like she Ten? was disappointed that winter wellness might happen on a day that she gets Full to time teach would kids. be 30000 so more. Like, the other thing we started Sorry. to do, I guess. Full time would be 30000 Besides the twenty that we're already paying, it's about fifty thousand for the whole contract. And could we hire? I mean, yeah, this is this is this is almost executive session. Yeah. Let us think about that, and we'll bring you well, back a yeah, we'll bring you back a proposal. Thank you. Yeah, let us think about that. It'd be nice. Um, the other thing, the other thing we want to let the board know is that we spoke with um, Alejandra when we hired her about. Um, Wendy's and my desire to have her working very closely with a PE teacher in Rochester so that yeah. in their individual areas of expertise, I'm just pulling these out of the air, they're not accurate, but if hers was health and uh, if hers was folk dance and his was juggling, mm -hmm. that he might go to Stockbridge and right. do a four week juggling unit and she'd come to Rochester and do a yeah. four week yeah. folk dance. I, I know that he has a big focus on, on the garden and, and right. So stuff. we're talking yeah. about exchanging staffs freely yeah. back. That's and that means that's, yeah, the, the, more, the more we can do that, the yeah, more we can, yeah. Yeah. can uh, uh, make that happen, Carl's, the more we can. Carl's thing talking about, you know, looking at these rooms, these buildings as resources, looking at our teachers as resources. And this idea, because I often I think we get, we look at these things and it's like, oh, we got to spend 500000 here or 220000 there, and it's, as opposed to, okay, what have we got? And what can we reallocate? To make it a lot cooler and a lot more efficient and a lot more attractive right. with just what we've got. Right. In other words, Easy. if we have an, uh, a Stockbridge Rochester elementary show in the auditorium that brings the Stockbridge people up and they see their kids on this big stage, that's using our assets well to show off what we've right. got. We right. actually just had a conversation a couple of days ago about we're thinking about getting the date set for this year's concerts. And yeah, I was disappointed and last year that they were we'd like broken out. They need to be well, well, there's two, well, there's yeah. two components to that. You have to think about little kids all in one spot, like yeah. little, little, all in one spot late at night. That's not ideal for any person, whether you're the teacher or the parent. <laughs> <laughs> or the principal. Or the principal. <laughs> I mean, that just results in kind of multi-day meltdowns. Yep. <laughs> but <laughs> it really does. You change a little kid's routine. I'm learning. You change yeah, a little kid's routine, yeah. well, messes their world. But how do we make that work? Right, yeah. What's uh, doable? And I how think, do we get there? I but, think maybe we ought to be thinking about combining power. classes for thematic units. You know, uh, certain times of the year, we're working on a thing together with bringing both teachers together, both, both classes together. Little by little, I don't know what those units would be, but Did maybe that something that they're doing. The yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe we ought to try to do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, more and intentionally the yeah. during the year. And, and what would help us there is if we could get a really good handle on what would it cost to turn that second zone on in the high school, because that picks us up a classroom, a good sized classroom, where if Faye was doing robotics, she could invite Maureen's fourth, fifth, and sixth graders over 
or if Maureen was doing well Maureen was doing something she could invite Faye over but they have the classroom there to, you know you got the bigger classroom there but that one classroom would give us more opportunity to do these kinds of things but so I've got an appointment with Frank Severy, who's a retired guy from Green Mountain Power. He's going to try and explain our high school power bill to me, because to me it makes no sense. It's going down virtually nil, even though we've got everything shut off but that one zone. And he says it's all about load over the last two years, and they bill on these averages, and blah, 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 blah. blah. Well, I'm using the word average. No, 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 no. They bill in a way, they bill in a way that I'm not with. I, just I think we're, I think we're used to averages, two-year averages is no, what we're dealing with right now familiar with so I really want to find out from him before I do it but it's virtually going you. down not much at all and we can't figure out why well, and one of the things we had talked about initially when Megan, we were talking you're so about good the raising your hand, and I think you just need to jump in and <laughs> no, somebody's going to call on you. I'm not that kind of crowd. Just do it. Word it out. A random, not a random idea, but something I've been thinking about about the high school building and how it offset some costs. Have you ever considered just selling the high school building back to our Rochester town and then renting the space that we need from them so we're not paying for spots? What did we know that they would cover all the maintenance and everything like that of that building? Yeah, I mean, I that's guess, I guess if we're we're focused on. Well, actually, that's exactly what we're oh, supposed to on switch the, on. Oh well, yeah, I mean, like the, the second hour, the second the hour is uh, Black River Design. Black River yeah, Design. Um, <laughs> we're kind of moving into it. Yeah, well, one of the things we had said at our at our uh, meetings when we were talking about the buildings were the idea that you know in September and October and in you know April, May, and June. Do you have a Using that high school Jim, building you know, is, is, is a lot oh, cheaper than it is oh, yeah. at a winter. I can't do I that for you. you so, I don't think we've <laughs> oh, sorry, we just but lost you. I don't think we've proved that. Right, that's just, that, that was just our assumption. Correct, right? that was our that assumption. We didn't but have to, you know, that in, in, in oh, no, September, fact, October, we don't have to turn it. I think we actually didn't, we disproved it this year. I think, I, I remember Barney saying that the bills were exactly the same. Yeah, that's what she's saying now. Not yeah. exactly, but they're not going down much considering no. what we have no, shot no, off. Right. No. Unless we, like, they're working on some two-year cycle that we'll see something drop Except off. Except for the, with the oil, I believe we, um, the oil, the actual oil expenditure was. That went down a little bit. Just, no. But. A, a small amount compared to when it was running at full steam. Right. Mm -hmm. You would think and it would have dropped a lot. Can right. we? Can we? You know? Do we know what was the average temperature during the winter? You know, was it a mild winter or a, or, or a heavy winter in terms of? It was a long winter. winter. I know we know that. Yes, yeah, so yeah. it was a heavy, yeah. it was a long, heavy winter. It? Yeah, it was a long yeah. winter. So as far as heating bill, heating costs, that would explain. Why even cutting it down? It was it was long because yeah, we had to keep it on. Really and in some ways, turning that second zone on may uh, let me think about this maybe the only solution for those 13 preschoolers coming in because we're probably going to need a second room probably and the art class is now in the only classroom the, is the only classroom that's, that's the zone we yeah. leave on mm -hmm. so can i just go back for a sec just because i want to make sure we feel like we've finished this Okay. You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, right. just to say, we ex we agree on all this. Yes, we agree and support that. We agree that. on all this. We support all this. We don't have second language up there. We don't have enhanced art curriculum up there. Which are two right things down? I would love to be part of that. Um, Y'all math up there. And so expanding. Expanding. I'm going to ask the board for money to buy a second banner that says "Raising Mathematicians." Yes, definitely. Expanding. Well, so yeah. Mathematicians is a hard work. Don't be clashing with my education. agenda. <laughs> <laughs> well, we Experiences. Well, Tell me again. I'm sorry. So, yeah. Racing um, reading will raise math. Um, um, uh, outdoor education will enhance <laughs> arts <laughs> and second language. I, take I think those are <laughs> three three educational areas that we feel it's strongly about. We all agree. I support your math, Bonnie. Wellness. Yeah. Farming. Yeah. Farm to table. Nutrition. We've talked about. And there's a grant. I think that might be out right now that will be due uh, and head start I think outdoor sometime and, in September or October um, for head start second so language. I remember I missed it by like the Rose event right. grant. I'm not I remember seeing I want the data driven and the herald and like the herald <laughs> well, I just read the grants already. Clearly. I just want to know this is this yeah. is what your tax dollars say for this week. I blanched twenty five heads of broccoli that came from our school garden so we could use and That's throw awesome. them so we can use them. Awesome. I was like, awesome. oh no, they're going no, I'm like, great. Okay. Nice for you. No, I'm and like, that's from Rock from Auckland. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Cool. Yeah. 
See, but I just want to go back to something that somebody said to cool. If we're really interested in raising achievement levels, it would be crucial that we figure out this this um, preschool program so yeah. that yeah. every single child that wants to attend preschool, I think, pre yeah. Yeah, expanded, preschool. expanded, and a full day. Expanded, yeah. that's school. Five hours a day. Yeah, for for all. Not three and four, for three, all three and four-year-olds. Yeah. Should have the opportunity. Talking about where we're going to put okay. the first money. But we have to. Well, that would be. I mean, if 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 we say that the preschool is important, you know, that's not food. You know, we can ramp up outdoor education, or we can ramp up food during the year. We really can't start preschool in November. If we're gonna say that we wanna have these kind of preschool opportunities, do we, do, does that mean we need to be offering that in a month? You know what my work is that if we got this flushed out, and something that Ethan said this morning, maybe we'd break off into two groups, these might, these things might break up into two big umbrellas, curricular program pieces and facility pieces. Maybe we could divide up and people could brainstorm around Next steps or further clarification or that so might on come or action items. Yeah, yeah. At that point, well, we action break, items. We have right. At that point, we could break up. Well, of course, the that's really about. Well, that's really. Was, remember, we talked about it. It was really about the building. Yeah. Are we actually going to do some of these things well, I think that they we, told us we, we need to do? We start to go buildings. into the Black River design to really look at what's going on with our buildings. That will help us. Then be able to focus on. Uh, I could have gone. Yeah, right, the roof's yeah. going to keep going. Yeah. Right. Uh, we are already yeah. ten yeah. minutes yeah. into yeah. our yeah. second uh, hour, so uh, okay. it is definitely time so to good. start to transition. I just wanted. To, I just did felt like we hadn't put a cap on this. So I don't think this is capped. I think we need to yeah. keep looking at this. As well, we said, keep stone. it up all that's the time. Stone, right it should be, and then if well, anyone wants to do it, there's another bathroom upstairs. Flip the page. I think it's time to flip the page. I'm just going to add this here because I think this would help us too. This is a tactic we use over in our dis our district. Is after we're done with one of these, or like closer to the end yeah. of the day, we ask this question: So, so what? what? Yeah. So what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, what that's we decided as opposed to, do. to. I thought it meant so what? Like who cares? Yeah, know, really? but, <laughs> Why right. bother? Let's yeah. just that get drunk, right? Well, yeah. I'm just yeah. when the Kelly Billy, right? Yeah. 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 That so what? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it should say so who? So who? So who yeah, so I think you're right. So who? So what? Because so often we brainstorm these things and then we don't. Yeah. I mean, like, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. A brainstorm without Jay's action is pet. just... It's admiring the problem. Exactly. Which you need to do. So that's a very good way to put it, admiring the problem. What a nice problem we have. I really like that problem. <laughs> Did you hear that the way I said about our problem? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about it. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about it. Let's talk about it. What do you think Washington does nine days out of ten? Yeah. What? What does Washington do? Oh, oh, Nothing. Nine days out of ten Remember talks you're on about camera. It. They admire oh, no, the Jenny, they admire a problem. So they do. They admire a problem thoroughly. Okay. So I can say more about that. I feel I like a little bit you might take the lead on this in some ways just because you've studied this. You can just, maybe we should just wait that because three of our members aren't here. Three have left. Ah, the heck with them. No. Um uh Hey, did everybody get a chance to review the um, the study? I just look at the priority list. Okay. I'm going to be honest. The rest just, just like Chinese. Okay. <laughs> I think that's the bigger version of it. Do you want to bring it? You said, girl. Oh um, yeah, no, I'm, do you need I'm it? Hold on a sec. Yeah, I just oh, okay, to All right, I was going to get a drink. I should pass it, please. Uh, Bonnie, could I just have a chunk of cheese? Oh, you want a chunk of cheese? Yeah. Which kind? Do you care? Uh, the least, with the least amount of things in it. Do you want, do you want crackers? No, thank you. <laughs> so electrical priority one. I see. Thank you. Just like the things that should be concerned about them when they come into the building one day. There's too many things this morning. I was looking for a regular knife. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> you know what happens? I first of all, there are bagels here. I've never had a morning without a bagel. So <laughs> you know, and I know we got to get through all this process, but it's like, okay, this is like, it's well, let's do this. Yes, no <laughs> well, but I'm just saying, what I, what I think is it is. Exactly. Oh, I know what you should do. I know what you should do. Well, there's bagels here, everyone. There's Sandy's bagels. Yeah, I know. But still, oh, bagels. Okay. Oh. okay, now, Jamie, not conversation time. 
we're going to have a working lunch. Uh, yeah, I think oh, we're, we're totally going to have a working lunch. Actually, it would be a good idea to we'll do like a five minute break because they're doing it anyway. So. Yeah, exactly. I think between yeah. sections. Yeah. Sit down. Okay. Come and bring your food to the yeah. table. Don't stand around the table because that's <laughs> unconducive. <laughs> This is what I do. I'm good at this. Because okay. everybody in rehearsals, like, you know, you give them a five minute break. Oh my God. Unless you have a good stage manager, it's like, five minute break. You are back. Five minute break. Yeah. When I was a board chair over at Walmart Feast, they used to call me the media officer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether you were there or not, if we're going to start at seven, I just start. Yeah, he's still on. Of course. Good. Smear. I love smear. What? It's not a bad genius. It's not a bad genius. Like, I love a schmear. A schmear. <laughs> okay, Carl. I'm coming back. Okay, Carl. <laughs> Jenny. Jenny. <laughs> Somebody will hit me at some point. I've already passed. Mm-hmm. And do that more work. Whoops, Megan, I hit my back. Oh, my God. Take care. Oh, I don't know. I'm just wondering if we need this, because we may need building. I love Sandy. Well, the thing with these numbers is that it took you a year to really have a trend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think it's good that we start and we keep our eye on it, but there's too few years to mean anything. My math skills weren't fully functioning to figure out hand cards. We're going to build a piece of skill for you, Carl. Yeah, that's fine. So we we can have a picture of that and then... Of course, Rochester used yeah, to have more kids kids, but that was because there was a high school. Yeah. Yeah. They were all high school. Yeah. Because the three-year-old programs have to No, there used to be what we called the twin town that existed. Right. Yeah. And it so we like do lately, normally see some not, but I didn't know It's how more to, disjointed right. than I can remember. I used to think of this area as all one. And I don't think people that have been moving here lately think of that that way. Mm. Yeah. Like, I think, just, yeah. That is a thing to re-educate. It is. Educate people thinking about, hey, Rochester's yeah. right here. We got a grocery store. We got a, you know. I mean, people in Granville think they, I mean, I heard yeah. them say this is the Mad River Valley. I'm like, no, you are in the <laughs> White, White River, River <laughs> Valley. Well, geographically. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's a pretty big spread. difference. It's a pretty big difference. Well, you know, you spit on one side and it goes to the North yep. Atlantic, the other exactly. side goes to Long Island Sound. Exactly. Right? We have nothing to do that with that. little gulf. <laughs> yep. And I don't know what this means, but two of the last. Four families that have left Rochester have just moved up the valley. They've just yeah. moved up the Waitsville. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because of employment? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So what are they finding on say? No, what, no right one of them is going to Burlington. We have to talk about the building. One was going to Essex, and but it makes it close way. enough to drive. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the buildings. <laughs> it makes it close enough to drive when they get up in Waitsville. Well, maybe you ought to have I, it. I mean, it's even, it's even if you live in Greenville, you're 15 minutes closer to... Into the, yeah. you got an hour and fifteen versus an hour and a half. So maybe you guys, maybe you guys ought to have a conversation with a with a select board in the Chamber of Commerce because it seems like we're all intertwined. Mm -hmm. you know? It definitely, I mean, definitely. Yeah. You know, maybe there ought to be a joint meeting of a planning with 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 the town fathers and and to try to. Well, there is a Figure new group that's gotten together. It's called Envisioning. Missed meeting up at Wednesday. Yeah. Right, Envisioning Rochester. Yeah, yeah. Is, is well. I noticed you have a new fitness center. Yeah, so As we, I drove through to get gas. So. Yes, we we do. It just opened uh, this uh, Fourth of July. So. What happened? Is that at We're, Pierce Hall? The, Pierce Hall. We have a fitness, fitness center. center. Yes, we do. Yeah, no, well, that's a, a new. They redid the whole downstairs. It's beautiful down there. And there's classrooms down there, like a classroom with mirrors and stuff that. Um, they're, they're gonna yeah, get some. Yeah. They're gonna get some things in there, and it could be a variety of things. So, yeah. <coughs> but kind of makes it hard for us to sell the to sell the elementary school and say you guys make a fitness center out of our gym. Yeah. When they started doing that, I was like, not now. Oh, in my head, I was like, we're gonna, but that's that's what I think Rochester. We have a lot of buildings. So what are we gonna spend money on? What are we gonna spend money on? I mean. Clearly, it sounds to me like we got to keep the numbers. Just I don't know. It clearly out. sounds to me we got three buildings to support for at least, I'd say, a year to two more years. Well, we're not. Yeah, we, we, we certainly can't close yeah. any building. I mean, we could, I suppose, but it, it doesn't make sense to try to. to do it. I don't think we can planfully close a a building this year. No, I would, I would, agree. I would agree. Yes, I would agree. With that. So would we can we, we can figure we're going to. We have to keep the status quo yep. for this year. 
-hmm. The status quo is going to cost us some money. Yes, uh, we just got, to get the basics. Just to get the roofs. Um, well, like lighting. I know the lighting was a big one around the high school and elementary school. Exterior lighting. I think all, all three buildings. The emergency exterior. lighting? Yeah, exterior lighting was, was the big was the one. In fact, Vermont Roofing's over at Rochester today. We're, we're actually pushing them. The first response was, uh, and these are my words, so uh, they're uncertain that the elementary roof, it's going to require huge repairs to repair it. They said it would be better to replace it, but we're not in the position of replacing the roof at the elementary school. So this is Rochester. Rochester Elementary. Elementary. So they're over there. So roofing is going to be an issue for spending money um, at both the elementary and the high school. And I understand at this point we'll do just repairs. I'll let you know what the repair cost is. Okay. Because again, sometimes if repairing it is going to cost eight hundred thousand dollars, and re-roofing it's going to cost oh, a million, a million, I hope it's not uh, even close one. But my, my point being, if, it, if, if you know, it's that whole kind of, we may need to think about replacing it because it, 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 it's silly to spend, you know, yeah. if, if, replace it, if repairing it's 80% of the cost of, of, of replacing it. But even if we replaced it, we couldn't do it before this winter, I don't believe. We, no, no. So we're going to have to repair it to get through the winter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, think, I think we should consider um, asking, going to the town of Rochester to assist in some of that money to pay for it because I do think that if the elementary school is our, is our first aid Red Cross Center mm -hmm. and Stockbridge is school and we're asking Stockbridge Town to put some money forward for the generator, I think that if, if we are, if it's a the public, the town has joint use, joint use, they should probably put some money into it as well. So roofs at Rochester, I know that. Both, Both elementary, elementary and high school, yeah. Where are we with the generator? Well, oh, that's that our next you meeting. You should go to the select board when the tax bills go out. That's what Jeannie found out. Yes, I went to the select board, unfortunately, the same day that the tax board oh, came okay. out. Bad timing. Yeah. So I used the article. I said, please don't turn me down. I'm a star. You saw me in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> They want to help and they want to be supportive, and I think they will be. Yeah. They just wanted, especially with the tax, they wanted to know, and rightfully so, what grants are available, how much money it would be. So I've told Lindy that, and we're going to get information to them. But, but they, they are respective to wanting to. Right, they put, just want that. Yeah. Right, want that. Well, that's good. Is that, that was, a this winter solution? Mm hmm. Is that the timeline that we have? Before that's the what we said. We needed it because we lost an instructional day. We can't mm -hmm. have that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what we get cell phone service. Uh, can we figure out a way to get cell phone service at the Stockbridge School? The, yeah, you know, I have it at Rochester either. Really? That should be a conversation with Rick Lowe, who's our new tech guy. Okay, because because they 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 did a kind of a hotspot type of thing in uh, Tunbridge last year, so that they they got some deal that they could put. Uh, so well, who needs cell there? service at, in the in at the school? I mean, I know that's convenient for us in meetings, but how does that no, increase our kids' point. education? Well, it doesn't accept safety it, thing. Except it's a safety, safety thing. thing in emergency. Yeah, right. it, but yeah. if it, it in the Rochester school, we still had to have that emergency landline. We could not use a right. cell phone. Right, we have that. So, so it, has that changed? No, but here's the deal. When you have a when you have a real emergency, such as an intruder into your building, yeah. that landline's My not concern. really much use to you. Somebody's got to have a portable phone that they can. So one of the things I was going to ask the board to do is if we could get a cheapest plan we could get, AT&T, and only use it in emergencies, that would solve the problem of cell phone reception at Rochester in the short term. That's what that's what closed us one day was was was, uh, was yeah. phone service mm -hmm. in Rochester. Right. Right. Yeah, but right. all through Lisa's cell phone. Oh. Yeah. Right, but that was with that Rochester, and that's where I'm asking is because most of the teachers have AT and T cell phones that worked in Rochester, so but yet we still weren't able to have school. Well, the, the issue was the parents didn't know to call. Right, that one they of those didn't cell have phones. I mean, it was right. they wanted to call them. Yeah, the emergency yeah see, we have no internet. Everything goes down because our hub is in the high school. Right, and there's no power in the high school when the power goes down. The generator's only on the elementary. We were we were on the phone saying, eh, I don't know what I should. You know, I mean, yeah, we they can't call into a main number. That's a problem. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we could call problem. out to people, but we so could. so for Rochester's 
no power situation because we have a generator for us not to lose an instructional day we need to have a designated cell phone emergency that we only number, use in those cases mm -hmm. that that all parents oh, yeah. have that oh, yeah. number mm -hmm. as their emergency number in all yeah. of our okay. stuff. Do we have that for we are going to need some, a, a, so an ability we, to yeah, have an emergency phone when we get this generator so we can still have our instructional have day, but we, we, we don't want to lose the instructional I don't, day without I don't think so. Well, this is outside my realm of knowledge. I don't think so, though, because when we lost power, we our emergency line still was functional. Like, we're not in two separate hubs mm -hmm. telephone wise right like you guys are so when the power went out and we had to send everybody home that day early we were able to plug into our emergency line yeah and use it just fine so we had no problems we would have to publish that phone well actually people could call us back parents were calling us back that's so. the weakest in stockbridge is power right the, the, the weakness in rochester is the, the phone mm -hmm. You know, of course, and I just want to make sure that we're phone. covering we're all our bases. All right. to, yes, we got power, but so you but need like an we I had power but for some reason. We still come out of school, so I want to make sure we get that all covered in Stockbridge, so we don't lose an instructional day. Right. It seems like there's two things we're talking about. There's not losing an instructional day when there's no power, and then heaven forbid, there's the event that there's a real intruder in the school. Yeah. The principal, right. the counselor, somebody's got to have a mobile phone that can move with them. Yep. So, so right now we've got um, roof repairs. The, are now, are these the have to happen? These are the place where it's leaking. It leaks over the stage yeah, yeah. tremendously. Every time it rains, it leaks in Lisa Blair's office. There's big open cuts in the edges of the roof. Those roofs. vents, those vents in the theater just yeah. drive me nuts. Those all got it. I mean, I was up there in a lift doing lights. I told you before, and you could see the light. Exactly. There's no air seal. Exactly. And there's these That's big turbines. No, they're but like there's chimneys. no ventil. But there, but if the ventilation's not working, then you actually don't mind having all of the leaks. So that <laughs> well, but in the no place for the air. But in the winter, you're but in the winter, but in the winter, but in the winter, winter. Anyways, we have to yeah. repair those two buildings. Okay. To and that long term figure out. Is that so in our is was that in our, our report here from Black River about the roof? I don't think so. Uh -huh. We've had Vermont roofing. Look Correct. Through. Okay. So I just so it, it wasn't well, part of the Black River. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Just so, I'm, just so I know, but when we're looking at the priorities that they set cool. forward, I just was clarifying that that this um, was so this is in addition to whatever Black River. Um, plumbing, mechanical. Now, would roofs be mechanical? No. no. So, so one kind of big picture thing that I was kind of surprised at was the um, sort of the square footage per student. So Stockbridge, um, with their addition, their square footage per well before addition was 151, and after was 180. And I'm curious what other, despite what the old regulations say, what other schools are standard uh, per per student, because they have the Rochester, but I mean, it's different because the elementary and the high school, but after was 317 square feet per student. So the public sees this, like that's a big difference. Is there any way to, so you can figure. Just so I can be on the same page as you, it, like this, it's the so first page in the page. existing square footage, uh, it says 151 gross square foot, uh, I see. Or so page stock three and then page six. It doesn't and then tell you what it is. 231 for per student in Rochester. Yeah, you know. Well, it doesn't. Um, what kicks I had calculated the. So the proposed area down at the bottom, they have 29,189 on page six. Yep. And so if you divide that by 92 students. 92 kids. So is there any way to reconfigure, like there's some spaces that, I don't remember what they were, but were bigger than what we might need. Um, that didn't seem like they looked into, is there anything that can be moved around I'm not talking about in Rochester or in Stockbridge? Right, in Rochester. Jenny, just refresh my memory because I don't recall. Does that square footage for Rochester include the gym? I think it does. Yes. See, I think that's what kicks it up for Rochester. Yeah, that's yeah, a lot of space. It's one thing that instructional. It's not. And one thing that was different. We can't the library in there. We can't. So the Stockbridge, their requirement 
for a multi-purpose room because it's not called a gym. It's right. called multi-purpose right. right. room. Right. I haven't launched in there. They right. have like 1,200 square feet. They said under 60 students, it needs 1,200 feet for. So line item 10 on Rochester is called gymnasium, so they have a different right. requirement because so it shows a different exactly. Exactly. And the way that it's being used in Rochester now, I mean, it doesn't look like that because it's a gym, but it's being used the same way you use yours as a multi-purpose room. We eat lunch in there, there's phys ed in there. So right. it is, it is mm -hmm. a usable space yeah, within the school. It, it's usable. Yeah. So, sorry, right, Jane, but Jane, as we were talking about, well, it didn't seem like they looked at reconfiguring anything, it's just where right. can we add on? Um, like they talked about the, the locker room. I mean, it is for the emergency, but that's a town thing. Like, if we're adding space because we need a locker room, that should be the town's. You know, right, right. You were should looking for maybe out. how we can reconfigure some of the existing spaces that we have to provide more space in a different way. Right. I don't. I mean, it's the way they did it. So if they have the red there, it actually means that. There's m more space than needed, which to me should be the opposite, yeah. but mm -hmm. just the way that they did it. Um, Is there enough storage in Rochester Elementary School to make art there was in the multi-purpose room like we do? So the, the well, uh, as the, I think we should be looking at maybe reconfiguring. 22 general storage for I Rochester. Just thinking yeah. of other ways we, we use our multi-purpose It says they have 900 square feet, but they only need 184. But I know, I think Stockbridge said that they needed some space, so yeah, that we've could got be special one. Life going on in the hallway. <laughs> I mean, yeah. some of it you might not be able to, um, you know, in this little hallway there, you can't bring that over to Rochester every day, but I'm sure there's some stuff. Right, um, some storage stuff. Right. But I was just even thinking, you know, you're comparing the gym. Like, off the top of my head, we also use a multi purpose room for art and music. Uh, how, right. how do we make art in the gym? But if we've are, but identifying it, haven't we identified in the stock version that that's not really the ideal way to teach gym art and music in the one room all together? I mean, she goes into, so our, I, I'm, I'm going to say for music, music it's it's not ideal, yeah. and, which is why I wouldn't put music in that branch of trying to put it into the gym. Right, and but, at, the, at the same time, you have to schedule to make sure that they're out of there by the time, early enough so that they can get lunch set up in there, their stuff's cleaned up, that you can't have art, you can't have the second graders going to art and the third graders going to gym because it's in the right, same space. Right, but art and, I don't know, art, and, art and gym on the different days. is passing through while special ed is being done in the hallway. Right. So I guess I think we've not, I thought we had identified that that was not really the ideal way well, to teach those classes. So I rather than bringing that to Rochester, I'd rather change that stuff. Yeah, change that. Wait, 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 one conversation, please. One, one conversation. Uh, so I would say it's not ideal, but I would never put music in that large space. I mean, it is better now that we have acoustic panels, but it's still not ideal. I would say it's not impossible. Correct. It's not ideal. Yes, we want ideal, but if we're looking for cost savings, I think we have to be creative. And I think, to me, one way to be creative is art is not that terrible on a cart. So young kids, do we put our K-1 or our preschool in the multi-purpose room for art? No, she goes to them. Older kids, it just depends on what project they're doing. It just depends on the activity. The way art, now our table situation is a little different in the multi-purpose room and that they can become benches and a workspace um, pretty easily. I I don't think it's impossible to do. Is it ideal? Would I like our art teacher to have an art room? Absolutely. But I think right. if we're trying to, I can't imagine having to bundle up kids to walk to a different space for art, which is what's happening right now in Rochester. Oh, what happened in the Yeah, we have to go into the building. I think an interesting <laughs> thing to look at in Rochester, and we'd have to, you know, spend a little money at this. Um, obviously, the gymnasium we have there now is close to a full-size high school gymnasium. Not exactly, people tell me, but pretty close. Um, it would be interesting to look at, okay, how much of that do we need 
to have a, 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 a quality does. phys ed program. Yeah. And then how much of it could be could redesigned with petitions and ceilings? Mm -hmm. And I mean, obviously, you'd have to do some soundproofing because you're right next door to a gym. But how could we make that space more usable for either a library, an art room? Right. So there we go. Well, let's, let's pull back and, 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 and do we, having been crammed into the elementary school building, do we see? Do we do we think that that's still the, the the best place to be, or do we want to be in the high school building? I mean, again, we, we said well, we th we thought it'd be when when we made that decision that we were going to be in the elementary school building. We said oh, it's going to be really really tight, but we're going to save so much money by basically closing off that building. So that's going to be the more efficient place to be. Do we say well, we've got <clears throat> the only thing we don't have in the high school building is a kitchen, um, but. You know, is it is, is that a better space to be in? Uh, you know, educationally. And they did say that you don't have a gym good. in there, right? No, but you've got you've got yeah, large, you've got the big middle space, the big commons, the big commons. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have you know high school kids doing that, and we're trying to get our kids outside more, anyways. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to expand our preschool program to. Well, it's not there that. anymore. So <laughs> you know, <laughs> the blank future. I don't remember what it says in the report, but I remember their presentation would say that they wouldn't need an addition that they could, I don't know where it would right. be, but fit the, the kitchen. Yeah. Shop in the right. the, 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 the tech, the tech, the shop. Yeah. 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 Tech they talked about taking the shop and the classroom yeah. shop. And making that into a kitchen. Right. The, the kitchen. Well, just looking at those two room. buildings and, and gym, how much work needs to be done in either building to, to um, well, maintain. To ma well, maintain, but to, you know, the boilers and, and everything. From from what I read, I thought that the, my impression was that the high school was going to need it less than the elementary school did. Yeah, I think you did. I thought, I, I thought so as well. Yeah, because yeah, the piece that's my understanding, and I'll know more after Vermont Roofing Visits today, but I'm trying to think long term. Um, my understanding is that the roofing needs at the high school I'm not certain of this, I'm just thinking, our, in terms of replacement, are less than the roofing, would cost less than the, replacing the roof at the elementary school. And it sounds to me like both either building is going to have to have a new roof at some point. They're both way well, over. Right, and I mean just talking? the heating system well, that's what I was in the elementary, elementary is like ready to go. And, no. and like, yeah, right, it's ready that, to that, be. That, 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 you know, we don't want to be in the middle of the school year. And suddenly have the heating system go. That right. talking steam weeks. distribution piping is original to the building. So it the sixties. And dangerous. The the uh, hot water system filled with glycol. The system appears to have become corrosive. The hot water system needs to be flushed and replenished. Um, I mean, you know, the, and that's all. There's a, that's I mean, here's just, here's a basic know. thing. If Carl's talking like, maybe we need to do this just to make the elementary school usable. Because I, I mean, I think we're talking, we're dealing with a little bit of a ticking bomb of of costs, of potential breakdowns in costs in the elementary, the Rochester Elementary building. Do they have a table somewhere in the report that summarizes? Their we got it. We got it. I just don't know. I don't know if it's somewhere it's not. I actually skipped I over all the tables and went to all the the written right. because that's was the information I really wanted it to ingest. It seems like everything's in the table, but they don't have a summary. Well, right. there is a summary. Yes, there is a summary a for so. Well, 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 it's a written summary. Um, it's broken down Code by. Efficiencies. Yeah, it's okay. So operational system page efficiencies. Like Thirty-one. Fifty-seven. Is the civil assessment. School. And so that gives, um, talks about general site description, circulation, parking, sidewalks. Um, but they don't have like a summary somewhere like total if you want to do this. Well, I feel like we that. saw that. I thought well, that we did the presentation. It says it in each individual. Yeah, right, here but they in should have individual. a summary. Yeah, there's no one sheet that says you guys right. like I mean, Google we could, we could pull these pages out. Can we pull these pages out? I think they should add But um, Because we need to probably do some hard numbers of you know, they're talking the stuff that has to be done. And we have to, that's what today, if we get done, that was, I would like to walk out of here knowing exactly what we need to spend money on and whether we should really right now be saying, we need to move the high school for this year because the elementary is about to break down. I don't think, not I don't, I don't think, think that we're heater, the way that we're talking about the heater Well, if system, we had to do it an emergency, we'd have to do it. We'd have to move to the high school. But that's, yeah, yeah okay. Right. But I mean, uh, we do have a don't we, wouldn't it be nice to have a plan for that? It, it would be nice to have a plan. But maybe so that we're ready for it because we got to heat it. We, but, uh, it sounded to me, certainly, that the heating system is Well, let me really back up a little bit. I, I have this sketch of a plan in my office because unbeknownst to me, I guess unbeknownst to the board, the 
system has been operating without a backup circulation pump for like three years because the system, system where elementary the or high school? system in the elementary right. building because it was like a seventy two hundred dollar fix or something like that. I said we've got to get a backup circulation pump because if the other circulation pump goes, even if the boiler's still fine, we're out of business. Yeah. We can't circulate our water. So they put that in. I understand the boiler is old. And it cost seventy two hundred, or was it cheaper? Sense, no, it was pretty expensive. Sixty eight, yeah. seventy two hundred. And um, so I don't. I can't say for certain, Ethan, but I don't see anything different about the heating system. In fact, it's slightly better with a backup pump in. Mm -hmm. So I think it's probably okay. too late to try and move into the high school yeah. unless yeah. we were doing an under a half to situation. But so it wasn't, I have this little plan sketched out. have a plan. I have yeah. it sketched out okay. of who would go where and shouldn't what it, we would shouldn't have Shouldn't we also have a, a plan of uh, how, what it would take to put the high school in operation in a short period of time? Because you could lose a week or a week and a half of instructional time. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I don't mean just the where classes are going to go. I'm talking about who do we call and what Actually, do Actually, the first thing on my list is call Bruce Labs. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I do. I'm going to be a lot of help in fixing But I do, but I have like well, call PTO, call community members because we would right. have to move desks and no, chairs. But I'm talking about I think that's what we're talking about here. Is do we problem. want to yeah. put, are we talking about looking towards that high school because that really seems like there's more space and more opportunities to bring in expanded pre-K, to bring in more uh, things ra rather than trying to limit and our space in the elementary school. So therefore we should put the resources towards but that you get high the school. political aspect of that, that then when we talked about that with the unification, Stockbridge just went, well, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't well, you get this high school. school you're going to yeah. yeah. so I, don't remember, I think it has to be part of a bigger plan. I don't remember what the actual the cost color. is side by side because they don't have a summary, which I think they should have. But at the presentation, it kind of seemed like it was a washout. I mean, you're either way, you're, right. yeah, you're yeah, yeah, still yeah. going to pay yeah. a lot of money. And, and that's what I remember them saying, Jenny, because one of the, one of the consultant said to me, you know, if it's pretty even, would you consider going to the high school? Because for the money you're spending, you're getting more space. And you're getting, yeah. The only different they, kinds of space. They so. don't go into that they kind of put a red flag with the flood mitigation. Right. I don't, it doesn't seem like it would be a huge. Right, there was, you just have to bring someone into that area. Right. And for that, that it, which it would, with the courtyard area to do regrading there to fix mm -hmm. that. And if all it is And also, it's also for well, actual, the the <laughs> uh, also <laughs> for uh, like, you know, Irene and a uh, flooding that came up into that lower part, they did have some pretty simple mitigations that we could do, like retaining wall and, mm -hmm. yeah. and I just, that I just feel like we could right sell up. the move to the high school so much better, and it would also unify this whole district, which is still essentially not unified um, um, in a lot of ways, if it was part of a bigger plan. Together. Like we're saying, we're mixing the schools, fifth and sixth are in Stockbridge, somebody else is here. You know, that it's, it's that we sell them in a whole package where everybody's getting something, and it's not just Rochester's getting something, Stockbridge is still not getting something. I can't speak for the public, but I think that, I think for some people, I think adding an addition to the elementary would be a harder sell than moving oh, yeah. to the high school. Oh, I think oh absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, if there's any yeah, building that has to happen, if we're going to do it, it seems to me it has to be in Stockbridge. Yeah, and one of the proposals was um, tear down the Rochester Elementary Building, leave the gym and the cafeteria a freestanding, I don't know, I guess that's right. what you call it, Jenny, freestanding yeah, building. Yeah, the boiler's right behind there. And yeah, and so that kind of that section right there is the cafeteria, the heating mechanisms, and the the the, uh, the gym, and put the money into the high school building. Mm -hmm. It costs a lot to raise a building. Yeah, to take it down. I know. It's it also costs a lot to keep it Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. right. There are a lot of questions. Where you, it's one time cost to take it's it down, down, it's a long term yeah. cost. Yeah. But I think we'd only do that if we offered it to the town and the town said, no, we don't want it. Yeah. Because there are some right. there are some town government bodies that are turning terrible. down the schools offer because they to be frank they don't want to bear the cost of either raising it or, or maintaining it either if they don't have a particular reason for it. Would, wouldn't the elementary school lend itself more if we kept it or pretended it to renting out that space? Yes. I think that's yes. a better office space probably. It's I would think. Or, or, or a store or a yeah. pre-K yeah. center yeah. Yeah. That's true. over there. Right. Yeah. Off 
office. But it's much, certainly much more conducive for us to raise money from that building than the high school building. Because the high school has complete access once you walk in that first set of doors. You, the other elementary building has exterior doors on some of the, not all, not all of the. You have to worry about areas. visitors and finger in the elementary and all school. that kind of thing. So the high school doesn't have those of safety. They do on the back side, Somehow. but it's not immediate. You have to get all the way around the building to see them. If we're going to be using the gym, and there's going to be businesses down the hallway, that's right. You can so and they might. Well, you would, I, I would think that you would. And they might not, not want to rent if there's the gym right next door. Right. Well, I right. think we would need a real. Um, what the real rules are about how close in proximity to a school or a school building. Um, different types of industry could be. The, um, there's a school in um, New Hampshire that I went to, uh, my uh, uh, niece's school, and their police station is in the parking lot. Of you the school? Have the school. In the parking lot of the school. It is, it is closer than the elementary school to the high school, and that is their police station. Mm -hmm. See, one of the, what are what the, are the uh, real rules on it? What's, yeah. what's the real what regulation? Are the unfortunate, fortunate Locked situations the is, um, <laughs> your community um, structures have such good infrastructure. You know, Rochester, they have a town clerk's office. Exactly. They, have, they are looking for They're something actually, new, they are. They, oh, they, 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 okay. they have to either put a lot of money into that building. There's a lot of mold. Or, or they, they need should to be, in the, town the board, should, yeah, should, the the board the should be talking to them. Because yes. what many towns are doing is they're, they are buying the elementary school for the dollar. They're accessing the Act 46 process. And they're moving their town offices. Yep. Mm -hmm. Some towns that don't have a library, they're, they've designated space for a library and a senior center. Yep. Now, we have a senior center and a library. We have, like, the historical And now, we, and now we have a fitness club. I know. Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> But you know, your society society is is that they're looking pool. for space. Well, the historical <laughs> society is looking for both display and storage space. Oh, that's that's another, another reason to talk right. with the town. But as I say, this is, it seems like this, had, I think we're, we get in trouble if we start piecemealing it, making these decisions without a vision, a vision for the whole thing. It just feels like, you know, to, for us to suddenly say, oh, we, we got to go to the high school. Um, I don't know, it feels like it, it, uh, I see Stockbridge being f left out very clearly. Whereas I think it's such a great, you know, this idea of how we play around with the ages and where people are going is so exciting and different and and expansive. And as Carl said, using our, you know, using our facilities, using our resources as opposed to saying, give us $5 million to build all new stuff, you know. I, um, I just think, think it's, parents, a, but it's a challenge. Do you think parents would, be on board with moving different grades to different schools. I'm just, I, my, well, my concern with it. that is. We'd have to sell it to them. My but I think it's a lot more of a unified. are a lot further from Stockbridge. Mm -hmm. than True. But I think we have to that's, plan that's for the kids problem. we got. I think we have to plan for the kids we got. Thank you. I think that's my concern. I think, I do I, I think if you were yeah. to do that quickly, that there'd be resistance. But I think if you start to get people prepared, Mm -hmm. For theme, like I was saying, thematic units for working together, classes yeah, 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 are going yeah. on field trips together. Which we down should. the road, yeah. right. down the road, it won't you be. Know, that's like a, all that's a vision yeah. That's why we need a five. But you know what helps to you know what helps. So let me back up a little bit. I wish I had grabbed it. We're, we're just finishing up a five-year plan, and um, where's that place I live? Right on the <laughs> east. Um, the board, as a board, we took some of these. I call them lightly. I call them lightly outlined circle. So we took some stuff like this. So we took, um, I'm going to make a little, I wish it were lighter. So we took pre-K, all day pre-K for all. And then we put, and then we took, yeah. um, then we took second language. And then we took facilities costs. And I forget, I forget what the other boards were. And that's all we took to the communities. Then each board member, because we, like I said, we had seven towns, so there's like 15 of us. Each board member went back to their towns. In this plan you're asking about, Ethan, they had the community help them flush this out. Now, you gotta be a pretty skilled facilitator, because five or six people are gonna show up in every town saying, this is the worst idea, we don't want anything different yeah, yeah, yeah. in Rochester, we don't want anything different about, and you gotta take those ideas and say thank you, and then move on to the other people who also want to give input. But they helped us over a period of two years mm -hmm. flush out this grand design. And I think two years is a key 
time you put it in there. Yeah, and I'll grab that five-year plan fast. and get it to cross so, and one to Bruce so they can get it out to everybody. But I don't, I think we have to have a little bit better sense of where we're going than we do right now. Yeah. But I don't think this has to, in fact, I think there's a benefit to not having it look like, well, they've already made up their mind with their No, 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 I, I think agree that's with a great idea. I agree with you. But I, but I think we have to be on board with, I mean, I think the idea of splitting up the grades between the two campuses is a big thing that we would all have to get on board with to put out there, even if we put it out there for them to talk about. Because one of the things that became apparent when we took this out to people, we had another sheet, we had a second sheet, would be that providing additional opportunities for our kiddos at a cost we can afford. So for example, if, let's just say we put all our fifth, sixth graders together. Mm -hmm. It might save a teaching position, which might free up 77, I don't know, what's the average cost, 70, 75, when you get salary and insurance and all that oh, in? 90. 90, whatever. I don't know, no, off the top of my head. Okay, but it's a fair amount of money, right? Mm -hmm. And that started to find its way into the discussion about, okay, we can take that $90,000 and we can have a full-fledged second language program in both schools, not just an enrichment a few, you know, a few hours a week. And, and um. well, I, then that's then I would say then the then let's do it that way. But I feel like we need we still don't have a process looking forward. And I think Carl's thing of where's the five year cutoff? You know, four years from now, whatever it is, where when what Stockbridge can say we're done or reevaluate. Um, what's our plan for how we're moving forward? Clearly. Academically, I think we're doing pretty well with it, you know, in terms of what we're doing. The steps we're going to take. Yeah, the steps we're going to take, take for that. Yeah. But as we're far as facilities, I, I just, we don't have a plan still. You know, we're just getting this information. We know we've got these things, but I think um, what are the pieces that we want to take the community? Because I think you're, I think we're pretty close to that to say. Well, I would break community into two categories, too. Taxpayers and parents. <laughs> well, I, I do think we need to yeah. get more parents. Yeah. feedback of you know um, kids whose families this is gonna affect yeah. it, at the greatest I mean there's the financial effect to everyone obviously mm -hmm. but then there's the like this is gonna be a change for a kid yeah. change is yeah. hard mm -hmm. you know yeah. potentially how do we get those then change get right send the survey home with the, yeah. pa the packet I think a survey I think it would be good to to try to figure out where our communities are in terms of how they're feeling about their school and the right. future of it. So is it time for another questionnaire? I, I don't I don't think it's a bad idea. Yeah, no, I think it's I a think great idea. Well, we should have a good introduction with some of the things that we are right. talking about, what we see we want. And right. what we're, this is the thing type of things that we want. We want to see foreign language. We want to see all day preschool. Um, one of the Why things are you guys finishing, think, Megan? Sorry, well, I finish. guess my, con my concern is I just don't want to make any big decisions on combining classes and grades if in four or five years, you know, we come to a point where, you know, the community of Stockbridge, I would think more so would just prefer to close a school and have full children. Like, that's my concern about rearranging everything. In the long run, what does each of our communities feel like we can maintain, afford, and want? But that's why I think, first of all, I, I think change is anxiety producing and we need to look at it. And I think the two things that we're looking at is number one, a transition. Mm -hmm. So you do take it over two years. And number two, to have, to have the community feel as they should, that they have a piece in this. So if we dictate, say, right. then it's going to be over. If we oh, yeah. do this, Little light. what Bonnie is yeah, saying, yeah, go they're going to come because they, the bottom line is we all care about the kids. I think if we do this the right way, they themselves, the community themselves, will come to the conclusion, as your group did, hey, we gotta do something here. This makes it better, this saves us money, and I think we can transition everyone to that situation. If we do it quickly, oh, no. no. And I'm not sure the survey shouldn't come out after a meeting. Um, because yeah. I think yeah. maybe the let's give meeting. our people the background knowledge that they need. Well, we haven't presented this engineering report. Right. That's the next meeting right. that we've talked right. about, right, is to present this. Right, right. and right. then a survey. Mm -hmm. But what, right. let, give them, give them empower the them with the knowledge yeah. Yeah. to answer it appropriately. And the right. other thing I'm going to suggest we do is, because I, I, I can tell you with certainty, right after this meeting, right after the first time that it gets televised, 
Some of us are going to get calls about why did you make this decision when we haven't oh, made man. a single this decision yet. So one of the things we did is we had a very visible online um, page for the board. And basically the chair put the first thing up about, you know, understand that everything will be posted here. Every decision the board makes will appear here shortly after the decision's made. If you hear about a decision that, about which you're disturbed, please call the superintendent's that office that you're talking about one time to make sure it's been yes, made. Right. And so we were, vi the board was very, very visible very early on about things. And basically we were saying, unless you hear it from us, don't believe it. Because can, Bruce, can this IT person for us, I mean, do they do web page stuff? Yeah. Or do we have sure. to? Yeah. So we could tell them we want to revamp our web page and we want to have this. We want it to stay current. We want it to stay current. We want it updated. We want, and, and then he can ask us for, Is okay, like give us some photographs. And providing us? Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's what I'm just saying. I didn't yeah. know. I thought we were going to have to hire a contractor. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't think. I thought we had it one point. He no, is. Like he is. Barn media. Right he is good enough to per, to give him a problem like this to he solve. solve it. We need. We have a he communications. Really we have a communications issue. We need really good websites for our website for our two schools. Because yeah. yeah. I think it should be one. I, for I both. like. I like this yeah. idea a lot that Bonnie's saying, especially mm -hmm. with the, this whole tax thing that went around. If, if this. We had a way to that, communicate. That this yeah. is right. a place for the public to go to get a an update, an current. answer, <clears throat> the most current information, and we have to be diligent about posting the most current, so that, as she said, as soon as the decision is made within a day, it'll be it'll be put up there. Right. Well, and, and, and again, because for example, the, the the when I brought up the idea of moving the five six out, it was actually just for the functional, right. if you don't want to put a million dollars into putting an expansion on Stockbridge, the only other way you can make some room is to get rid of grades, you know, get rid of the oldest kids, because they're the ones that are, you know, old enough and mature enough to be able to, 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 to be bust. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, and that's, the, it's, it's, it's not at all, it wasn't at all brought up as an educational solution, it was brought up as a, you know, putting putting that kind of question out to and humanity and saying, moving, yeah. the, the, the space utilization in Stockbridge is unacceptable. Yeah. We can't teach special education in a damn hallway. That's not fair to the kid. That's not fair to you know to have to kick the principal out of her office when when they need a nurse a, a private nurse's visit. Yeah. You know that doesn't work. So we need to fix that. And then either we have to expand or we have to reduce the, the grades we're offering in that facility. Oh, those are the very you know, good. It's, it's very it's clear. clear. It's also a good argument for the people there because it's like here's your school. Here's the situation. You choose. Right. What would you do? Right. And we just need to move um, it. I think yeah. we need to be able to, in our meeting, we, be, we need to be able to say, here are some of the obvious questions, like that one, mm -hmm. and then be able to back that up and say, well, it's, you know, we this would mean it would work like this. If we did this, at, if we, if we went to fifth and sixth grade, here's the advantage that there would be, you know, there'd be a, a bigger peer grouping. Um, you know, these kids versus, are capable of, of, of traveling on buses, so we talk to more space. Able to spell that out versus the right. spelling out the if we have if we if we bonded it like this. How it's much it would cost. cost, right? And and the uncertainty of the population in the future and the fluctuations of it. Um, the other thing sure. that's we're the advantage that we have is that our preschoolers have their one class that is a Rochester campus and a Stockbridge campus class. They know each other so well right now. Bonnie was saying that the preschoolers yep. would come to, to the Rochester campus and they're comfortable, they knew the classroom because they've been there so much. I would say K-1 does as well. K-1, okay. Yep. And so this is the group that's going to be our next four or five years. So by the time that, you know, the third and fourth grade. Yeah. They are going to really be the norm. Yeah. Right. Be the, norm. the other thing I'm going to say that we learned very early on is change for kids is nowhere near as problematic yeah, as change absolutely. for adults. <laughs> I was going to say that. We kids they are, like it. We they like, like it. it. If yeah. you guys could hear some of the stories that your own um, seventh and eighth graders oh have God. come back I mean, with. Jody. Like, Jody, Jody and Wilder, it's just incredible. Yeah. When are we? When are we? I mean, yeah. when are when are we going to see our Rochester friends again? I can't yeah, tell you yeah, how many yeah, times that yeah, came out yeah. of younger kids' mouth. The other thing you could think about that we did, and it worked for us, and in, in, um, uh, we didn't do this in Rutland Northeast. We did it out in Bridport is we had a series of meetings, we had these surveys, we did all that, all working toward March, and on the March ballot we put four or five non-binding questions. And um, 
because that's the only time you're sure you're going to get a good read from the community. Yeah. Surveys, a certain group will answer, a certain group won't answer. Parent letters, a certain group will answer. You meant ballot besides the, the, the March. No, no, the March. At when, town when the town, town, meeting, when the town okay, And the questions were something like, um, if we could increase opportunities for your students, would you send your sixth graders to Middlebury Union Middle School? If we could blah, 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 would you? And those questions came out of the of the meetings and the presentations that the board had done throughout the year. And they generated these four or five questions that they put on as non-binding um, questions on the ballot and got some surprising input. It was surprising. Is Rochester a paper ballot? No, yeah, no. no. None of them are. Yeah. Okay. No, it's all together. Uh, town we, meeting, yeah, town meeting. Town school. No, yeah. Town meeting is. No, town meeting is, is uh, paper. Australian. Well, are you going to Australia for your town meeting? No, that was a school no, budget. Certain, certain things, you're right, certain things. No, no, no. Uh, it's no, the school budget all. you do at, the, at your annual meeting. I'm saying town. 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 town is not Australian not budget. Paper. You vote for no, it in no, the world. We're, we're Australian. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Both town, you are Australian? Both town and, both town and uh, school, yeah. Or, well, we're school now. No, but not, yeah. not, well, not they're, school anymore. They're on the floor. Yeah, we're on the floor. On the floor. Right. Australian ballot is paper and pencil. Right. On the floor. I'm sorry. For some reason, I Flip that around in my head. Sorry. Oh, okay. Ignore me. Australia. We are not Australian. <laughs> right. the They're floor. not Australian. I was just asking because I think on the ballot, <laughs> when it's paper and pencil, I think you get very honest answers. Yes. yes. When it's from the floor, I think people go with the majority. Yeah. They do. Yeah, that's I mean, true. I didn't realize just nobody based on was Australian. Some feedback I got just from our annual No, but you you could hand out on um, something at the meeting at the door that people could But even then even sure. then it's like so it is it is the thing. I mean, how do we get these other people to the meetings? How do we get how are we having a meeting like this? I mean, if parents heard this kind of meeting like the, what we talked about in the first hour, parents would be thrilled. They'd be thrilled to hear us talking about that kind of stuff because they'd hear that this is where we're working toward. This is where we're engaged in, but we can't get those people. Okay, to so when when we were in poverty schools, you don't get parents to come. You have to go. They to don't want to hear the things that you, they're going to be told, and they're working four jobs. Yeah. And the only way we got parents to school was to feed them and to have their children do some act, some reading activity. Also, and they could theater. see what their kids theater. would do. I mean, People <laughs> come to theater. Yeah, but, but I'm talking about too. a parent night yeah. where what you said, Ethan, where a teacher gets up and says, this is what we're going to do this year. Mm -hmm. Let me show you reading groups that we're mm -hmm. doing. Let me show you how the reading program works. Let me show you the math program. So they're watching their students. Parents will come to watch their students and then we had a dinner and parents will come for food so and if we had to we went out and we took the parents in our cars and we brought them and there were things all over and a critical thing is we just didn't have the bright kids we had those kids who were struggling perform because we wanted the parents to see that they're successful those kids the other kids always perform we wanted the, the bulk of our population to show our parents what we were doing. So to be even more specific to that, there's this thing that's called full service school model. It was done in Bennington at Molly Stark Elementary and my mother-in-law actually helped with it. That's a little weird to call her that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she would say the same thing. But um, she gave me the book, which explains the whole process that she and the principal went through together because she did early ed, like a Head Start program. That's what she, her background is. So one of the things she and I were talking about, I said, how do you get the parents that don't show up out? And she said, feed them, but you feed at the end of the month. When people, are, like, there's a whole yes. chart yes. of how to get yes. people yes. 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 Yep. out mm -hmm. and what communities they, she and this other this principal, yeah. Sue McGuire, knew. They just, they went with meals to the homes to get parent and community feedback yeah. because those were the areas that just wouldn't come out. Yep. See, that's the other piece. We can't just worry about getting parents out. 
we have to get people who don't have kids for these kinds of questions, like what do we do about our buildings and our facilities? That's a whole, we're interested that, in the whole community. Yeah. So we have to figure out ways to get to those folks who don't have a child connection to I know, let's just have a tax problem every two months. No. <laughs> yeah. 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 We'll show up for those and those. But actually, those people are fine. We actually want it's to talk to you about that. the parents that are not coming. The tax people, the meeting the other day. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I think it's also those are the people like 20, without kids. We see five. you, Mason. We see you. We as parents need to, as well, get out and talk to other parents. Okay, but that was like 20 people, Jamie, right? Or 25 people? But there's far more community members in our oh, communities yeah. than 25. Mason. The whole technology here, you guys haven't incorporated into communicating with the parents just now. I heard all this getting, trying to get the parents there, but there's this whole technology where they can feel obligated to actually participate in a home setting with you, even if it's a teacher communicating about the class directly to those parents. So there's a whole technology you guys can look at here. If we had somebody editing the school board meeting videos or this video because you know you don't want to ask them to sit through an hour two hour no. three hour but if you it. had them edited editing it so that it was part of this web page <coughs> so that they could see and hear our sound bites you know that's that's to remember though the same people who don't show up don't necessarily have access well but we need to get we're, black we gotta go we gotta go we, 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 we gotta be included yeah. we have to yeah, include it as one of the right. options yeah, i think yeah, that's yeah. what you're saying we need to use black board to invite them right. that's and i don't want to spend anybody's money foolish the robot call. The, no. um, we actually <laughs> hired a communications person over there to help us generate just like mason said ideas for how the board could communicate about this five-year plan that we developed well it's also for the teachers she, to communicate to the parents <laughs> and she actually mm -hmm. came up with some ideas that nobody else had even thought of because that's her area of expertise mm -hmm. um we're, we're in action issues <laughs> okay, because we, we, we really made a lot of progress on that. Tool. But, maybe this, but this is more action items. Well, so it is speak, actually. Like, right yeah. But before we leave, this, we, we got to get a couple of the things up there. We got to get um, we got to get fire alarm panels. Well, we have to do. We need to. We need to. I think one of the things Those we need to do is later. we need to go through and say because the yes, all the reports are here's the priority one things. These are the things that have to be fixed because they're code. Right. So we Rochester need to High School get that. Mechanical priority that item number one: um, inspect underground oil tank. We're on Test and inspect right. all ventilation equipment. Confirm this is the equipment. Where, what building are this you is still? Rochester High School. I don't think so. you have to rewrite this, Lindy, because we've got it. Maybe I we mean, got it. You want, but we just have it. to decide which ones we're doing. Right. Right. So, right. so what is the? I mean, in, in short term, do you want me to? Uh, would it be good to go time. through building by building and read the priority yeah, items? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Should we start? Let's start um, with all the priority ones. That, that those are supposed um, to be the short terms, right? Yeah. Can I ask you a simple question? The priority ones. Wouldn't aren't we, aren't you just planning on us doing those? Because those are high priority things. But some of them are. No, but aren't they're not all urgent things. I was just saying they're not all urgent, are they? Some of them are. Well, it'd be nice to. Isn't I'm it? looking at well, there's code deficiencies. I mean, like, we're not going to add page, page page according, to them, according to them, priority one is in that quote code violation or conditions which appear to impose an immediate uh, hazard to to uh, so or, or life safety okay. issue. That's so page 41, code deficiencies for Stockbridge, our heating system, ventilation system, and control. Oh no, no control. Right, so we should let, do, we should, we, but what, what I'm saying is we, this is the money that we're, okay. if we're saying we're doing all this priority one, this is the money that we're spending, and it's in the neighborhood. Oh, see. So this is, it's it a little confusing here, sorry. Right. Here we go. Mechanical priority number one. Um, this is 41, inspect underground oil tank, verified tank is not leaking. This is for Stockton schools. schools. Mechanical priority, priority item number two. Right, but what's the dollar figure for that? Uh, the first one is 10,000 to 15,000. So let's, let's call it 15. The, where are we? This Stockbridge. is inspect underground oil tank. So that's 15 plus. Uh, 15 mechanical priority number two item. Replace warm air furnace. So let's do, do, the, do the three priority ones. So it's 15,000 for the for Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so then Nothing prior, for plumbing. plumbing priority, none noted. What about uh, the electrical lead? priority. What about the lead thing that, uh, that the state has mandated? Well, that's yeah, not, on this, report. not well, on this report. I know, but that's so electro reality. Here's electrical priority number one is provide emergency out lighting within the building, replacing central battery equipment. So I'm I'd sorry, like that's to... 3,500 to 4,500. No, that's 8,500 to 12. 
No, electrical priority number one yeah. item, page 43. Page 39. It's 8,500. 8, I have Stockbridge. I, here I have. Priority number one? Electrical priority number one is uh, provide emergency lighting. And to relocate this meter and bus plug in. Um, that's in the front of the school. Yeah, that's 40, page 43. That's what it's I'm looking Clearly? Sorry, where, why would okay, where, 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 you are? Electrical priority number one. Okay, so if um, you um, add the two of them together, because there's a priority yeah. A yeah. and a priority Oh, I see what you're saying. I'm on the front big summary page is where I was. So you do have the summary page. I do, I do, it's on the, it's page 39 that it, um, it doesn't give us oh, yeah. 39. So anyway, hey, okay, so. Janie, do you have printing capability here? Yes, I they, do. Didn't Could he bring the copies? This, no, the summary. The summary. It's period. on page 39. I know. Right, but, but not it's, there, it's, it's, it's on, the, the, the difference is that when you're looking at the PDF, it's page 40 something. If you look at the bottom of the PDF, it's actual physical page 39, because oh, the they, start, they start numbering after the cover. Okay, and I think, but yeah, it's 10 to 15 for mechanical, and it's 12, so 27,000 27, is, the, is the Stockbridge priority but ones, Bruce, right? 12,000 for electrical, 15,000 for plumbing. Reading through, I, 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 I might have have make, okay, hold on a minute, let's ask well, Janie, can we ask Janie to make a copy so we're reading the same document from is the that same this page? Is that this page 30 Well, that's here. Stockbridge. That's just Stockbridge, yeah, we've got three, we'll have three summaries. Okay, so let's page pull 39. Up. Page 39, then the Rochester one is... And then we're all looking at the same document. Rochester, hey, Rochester. one is here is page 40, 45. Yeah, page, page 45. 45. So 39, and 45. Then here, let me give you the elementary. Uh, the elementary. I'm going to beat you to it. No. We don't have only... The elementary, you have to look at that sec that second email. It's right here. It's right here. Yeah, it's page one, two, three, 14. Four, five, six, uh, actually, There's nine. So 80, nine. 90, I don't need it. I have it. Yeah. I need okay, copies. This is okay, just let me make sure I'm doing the right yeah. one. So There's one more. Mm -hmm. Here's plumbing priority. I was hoping I had solar We need two oh, for Rochester Elementary High School. Oh, one you have it in this I have Stockbridge you Elementary. Have I have executive summary. Should I have something else? Oh, do you want yeah, here 45 the other? Here, I'll give you a right five. Let me just cut and paste these into a separate page. Cause then, cause All right, just let me tell you what I have. I have... Rochester High School, Executive Summary, and Stockbridge Elementary. Are those is Rochester question? Elementary School in the back? It is the Executive Summary. Back. No, it's not in the back. It's, oh. the, it's that tall one. It's the Elementary School. That's right. The tall one? Well, it's, 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 it's a vertical rather than horizontal. Archer, 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 Archer
Uh, yeah, the, it's mechanical priority ones is 80,000, which is oil tank, uh, ventilation equipment, uh, dust collection for the shop. Right. We don't have to do it because we don't, we don't operate the shop as a shop. Right. Um, but it's just, it, it's, it's, it's what they, it's what they, I, I'm figuring if we, if we go by the high numbers, it's good. We're never going to, we're never going to spend more than this. Right. True. You know, so that, you know, and, and you also want to figure that, yeah, they're, you know, half the time they open something up or for trying to fix something, there's always the unforeseen, right. oh crap, that's, right. asbe that's asbestos. Right. And oh, I look, read nothing that said we had to do that dust collection if we weren't operating it as a shop. It did say if we were not operating it, we did okay, not. Okay, so we can pull that amount out, whatever right, it is. Right, but it doesn't say what that, it doesn't tell us what that okay. number is. It does. Well, it does. So, hold on, let's just go does. through the, yeah, like we said before, let's just go, go through, through all the, of the, let's get the elementary school. Okay. Yep. So was there the anything else? I have the elementary The electrical yeah. systems, the, so the plumbing systems for the high school are uh, reviewing the number of fixtures and uh, ADA, back flow protections, and uh, mixing valves. Um, is the plumbing system at the high school. The electrical at the high school is all the distribution equipment, uh, the emergency lighting, and uh, the uh, inside and out. See, that's what and that's one did. And that's 176.500. That's new. Okay. That's new. Uh, say that again about electro. I got the emergency light. What was that? Uh, distribution panels. All distribution. The, the, the specifically the Federal the Pacific panels. Electric panels. That was really old. But it's still from the 70s. And then emergency lighting. And then emergency lighting. Well, again, it's all about priorities. Right. Where are we putting our money? And you said that was one seventy-six five hundred. Health and safety first. Total. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Elementary school. Okay. Oh. We have first priority mechanical priority item number one uh -huh. is fifteen thousand dollars inspect underground oil tank. It's the same up. for stock. Yes, yeah, so we, we'll do. We'll get one contract. Priority in the plumbing. Priority number one. Uh, there's no cost to this. Uh, no. Review the number of plumbing fixtures in the gym for code compliance. So gym code compliance, I guess we'll say. All right, and a backflow protection. Oh, this is three things here. So sorry, I need to add these in. A backflow and thermostatic mixing valve. That's a, for a total of sixty-five hundred. Right. You're okay. plumbing right now. Yeah, I'm on plumbing. I'm just about to go to electrical. We're just going. Backflow. Back what was that for? Backflow. Backflow was mixing valve. Mixing, mixing valve. valve. And the total cost was uh, sixty-five hundred. Sixty-five hundred. Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to electrical. Number one estimated priority, provide emergency lighting within building, replacing central battery equipment. This is 4,500. Yeah. Central battery equipment. And so that's a total of $26,000 uh, for the Rochester yeah. Elementary School. Yeah. So right now the high school is the bigger. What's the big one in the high school? So. Well, the ventilation. The ventilation. Yeah. But it does. They, they all of the ventilations in all the buildings were uh -huh. not tested. So Sorry. how can uh -oh. they say that they new ventilation in the high school but not in the elementary or the or Stockford? How is that a priority in the high school when they couldn't test it? It may just mean getting it up and operating. That would be our good luck. That's all it meant. I think it. So we don't know what is the problem with ventilation in the high school since they couldn't get it started. Is it is it shot or is it just there's a piece that's so not working? So we need working to know. We need, so we need to get something assessment. in there. So that's the number one So we one need priority. to assess the ventilation. Yeah. And that's less than some of these other Ventilation says, this is the high school. Um, general, the existing ventilation system are not operational. Yep, the rent job, so. Uh, concerns. Here's the concern. What page? Um, on in the high school, it's going to be page 48. Um, the high school uh, 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 under ventilation uh, for what page? Sorry. 48, top right hand column. It says air handling equipment is over 40 years old. The air handling units have exceeded their useful life and should be replaced. Is it existing air distribution yeah. ductwork systems oh, should be professionally cleaned to maintain proper indoor air quality. Existing wood shop area does not have adequate dust collection systems to control dust buildup. Jane, here I got these. 
Oh, thank you. All right, so the question there becomes, though that's a number one priority, does it need to stay a number one priority given the limited use of the high school? We know it's a problem. We know it has to be addressed. Well, we're, do we know it'd be nice to have a cost for how much it would be to fix? Well, yes. So they gave uh, us let, me fix? Just, let me just then compare it to what they said about the element, Rochester Elementary School ventilation system. In general, the ventilation system in the buildings were found to be non operational because the equipment is no longer serviceable and should be replaced. Gotcha. Original classroom areas. Um, where served by rooftop heating recovery unit, which includes ducted fresh air to each classroom. Exhaust is ducted from the heat recovery unit. Each toilet room and over each classroom closet unit is installed as part of the 1990s project. Okay, so, so there must be some type of ventilation going on then. It's just not a main big system. So then we have an error in this column, don't we? Because we didn't put anything in this column about ventilation. In the no, well, that's they, 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 they did not. Interestingly enough, when you look at the elementary report, um, it like it has seven hundred thousand dollars as a priority too. Yeah. So I'm not sure whether they just think that. Um, so it must not be a code issue. But if yeah, it is at the high school, why isn't it at the elementary school? I'm on the elementary school page three. Yeah. That's the right where it says that the priority one items are ten to fifteen thousand dollars, and that's the the oil tanks. But priority two is replacing all ventilation system and uh, 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 new boiler system and new controls. So they say, you know, it's interesting because their 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 final cost for that, when you say the priority two, which is the non-immediate piece, yeah. is seven hundred to ten to nine hundred thousand yeah. dollars. And it's just interesting to me that the non-immediate ventilation piece is in the building that we occupy fully, and the immediate ventilation piece is in the building that we barely occupy. Right. That's all I'm, that's what's yeah, just no, the that's, question. That's, I that's, that's, my, um, oh, I, you know what, I think I have yours. And she has some copies copy. coming. Okay, here's the, here's the, where are the extra copies? Yeah. Um, I believe that that, the, that one is mine, and that one is mine, that you, I, I believe those, do. that one, it's got the whole yeah. bunches in it. Is it, oh, no, it doesn't have a copy. No, it's a copy. Oh, so it's so just a, a whole bunch. Jamie, I have yours. Sorry. No, they should have a whole bunch, actual whole bunch. Yeah, I realized that when I had, I must have. Okay, had so, should we have, so there should be oh, no whole okay, bunches if it's. No, yep. she needs hers originals back that you took upstairs. Except whole bunches. I have one. I need. I just gave you back. She needs two more. Rochester High School? No, the. But they have whole. They no, I need the outline. Was, I need no. the staff. Yeah, executive summary. Whatever you want. Yeah, but I, I mixed it all up. No, you took my executive summary. That was here. So somebody may have some with whole bunches. Take a look. They look like they're whole bunches, but they're just half moons. Thank you. Look at yours and see you don't have. I do. I mean, I have. That's. Is it this? Did you leave it in the copy? All right. Well, give me just another one, please. Yeah, Unless so every, as long as everybody has one. Do you have these? Oh yeah. Do it. That's. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is not the one I want. <laughs> it's the Stockbridge one that I need. There we go. That one? So, if see, if you look up in the corner, it says what it is. Yep. Well, <laughs> Okay, so starting with the ventilation system is where we're, we're at. Um, so ventilation, so you're, and you're saying ventilation... I mean, I would agree with Bonnie right now. Ventilation system, I would say, where higher priority is a new mm -hmm. heating system for the elementary school than a new ventilation system for a high school. Wouldn't we say? Though, so even though one is priority two. Depends on which we're going to occupy. Yeah, right. well, exactly. <laughs> and if we're, our goal right now going forward, I think we've established today, is we're going to go ahead with the status quo for this year at this point, except in an emergency. We're going to have an emergency well, plan. Yes, I said yeah. I mean, we with it, so far that's where we're at. But I think maybe looking at these may, it you may it change. May change it, it may change because I would say if we're going to spend a hundred thousand dollars, because right now all these are, you know, right, Bonnie. I would say that most of these numbers, fifteen thousand, twelve thousand, they're not break the bank kind of maintenance numbers. I think we have like fifty six or fifty seven thousand budgeted in maintenance. For okay. This year. So the big one would be if we're gonna spend a hundred thousand on something, what do we spend it on? If we you know, if there's some big ticket items Well we have a roof. Well we don't know how much that roof fixing is gonna cost. 
I believe the elementary roof was in the vicinity of 200000 so that's more like for a fixing? bond issue. Oh, for fixing. No, for I'm fixing. sorry. Yeah. We're still trying to find out. Okay, how much? What's the extent of the fixing? Got you. <laughs> yeah, I know, I was like $200,000. Yeah. Um, so I guess I go back to, I don't know if it was Janie's point or Jenny's point, but if, if they come back with a repair number of 132. Yeah, then it's what's the point? What's the point? But if they come back with a repair fix of, of 18, 40 000. or 18 right. to 40,000. That's much different. Then we can work that in. So it's about priorities. Obviously, the buildings we're in right now, full time, should be the highest priority. Yes. Not necessarily. If I mean, if I, if you're looking forward, you definitely want it to be safe, and we want to make sure that every right that it's safe. But I mean, are we putting a, a large investment into a long-term fix of something that we are not necessarily going to be occupying? Which of course gets back to the big picture. Yeah thing but, of what is our vision okay. for four But I go back to this ventilation because Stockbridge has a has the has same a, thing, a code deficiency. It says ventilation system, fresh air unit is not operating to provide required ventilation, but they don't put it it's a code deficiency, but they don't put it as a priority to that needs to be not an immediate so hazard I'm not sure or a life safe hazard in, in the Rochester Elementary building. One of the things they said about Rochester, and I'm guessing it might be true about Stockbridge, is because of the conditions of our windows and this and that and everything else, there's probably enough fresh air coming in that isn't brought in by the system. Huh. Right, right. Yeah. That may be why it's down at a. I mean, I think Amy's point is, is a good one. You, um, we wouldn't want to make a financial decision on repairs that locks you into something Great. so that you yep. feel we right. can't change these buildings. We just put $700,000 into these buildings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we're locked in. Exactly. We're locked in. So it's the safety issues. I mean, it's the safety right. issues. Right. Well, and, and, look at and understanding, you know, what is, how much is that dust collection system? Because the, the mechanicals for the high school are 65 to 80 grand, and that's, for the underground oil tank, um, we're testing and just testing and inspecting uh, in uh, the ventilation system, and then installing the dust collector. I, I, Which I don't think we have to do. It's right, so right. We're not going to operate. Oper we wouldn't be operating a shop, but you know. Right. That's, so here, that, you, the mechanical dust collection is fifty to sixty thousand. Yeah, I would. Okay, do that. so there you go. So done. we can take right. we can take theoretically fifty grand off the high school repair. Sixty because we were going on the 60, high side. Right. So, so it's down to one fifteen. Uh, the high school, so it's one fifteen. 116 five hundred. Okay, so here in the priority one for the high school, and again, in uh, regard to the ventilation, it does say um, estimate cost range. Um, work would not be required if controls and equipment were replaced under priority two. Oh, I see. Right. Yes, we're cutting this off. So they do still. Yeah. Um, they, they still right, but now you're down to it's it's, it's close. It's I mean, it what the the oil tank was fifteen grand at every other place, so you've you know you've got five thousand dollars for ventilation inspection and fifteen grand for an oil tank, right? Because you take sixty grand out of that top mechanical box. It's still a hard sell that we're spending f almost four times as much yeah. on a building that's hardly occupied. Right. Well, because the, the majority point. of that becomes the, I, I bet you when you look at, because the other big cost for the high school is the set is the 78.5 for the uh, for the uh, distribution panels and emergency lighting, and I bet you the majority of that is the distribution panels at the high school. Right, which are which operational be, right now. So they're and operational, they, but yeah, we don't want to be spending on that until we know long term whether we're we're right. going into that or into that yeah, building right, right, or, because, how, or how. Because that um, it is functional. They just say that it is um, it's obsolete, right. and it, it does need to be changed. Yeah. But if we're not going into that building, there's no, set, there's no fine. reason for us to change it. Yeah, we did fine last winter as far as all the buildings and stuff like that, right? Let's we're see. I don't have any expertise in any of this, so I'm just going to throw it out and see if it makes sense. I would, I would get the oil panels inspected. Oil Excuse tanks. me, the oil tanks inspected. Yep, safety. I would get the roof repaired. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I'd do anything else in the high school because the limited amount of time that we're in there in the close proximity to the front of the building. Jenny, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of this emergency lighting is if there's a heavy, smoky fire and people have to figure out how to get out. I would assume. The art room is right there, right around the corner from the front door, and there's a door, exterior door, out oh, of the art yeah. room. So I don't think we have That's any. the risk for the theater. Yeah, now the issue there's becomes two. public use of the facilities non-school hours but 
it seems like investing these kinds of sums in either building until we're certain. Uh, we're, yes, we're yeah, long -term. absolutely. Yeah. Good, yeah. good, good, good. Well, at least now, thank God, we have the list. I'm glad you know, yeah, we have right? the list that tells us where, where they And I guess my thought would be, if we're looking toward the future, there's only two, as I look towards the future of Rochester and Stockbridge, there's only two things that's going to happen that I can think of. Either both communities are going to grow <clears throat> and we're going to need more space for kids, or both communities are going to get small enough to the point where we're going to need to come together. Those mm -hmm. are the two things I can see happening. Mm -hmm. If we come together, neither of our buildings are large enough to bring that school population under one roof. So it would seem to me somewhere in the future, we're going to be having to look at the high school for one reason or another. The problem is we but, just don't know when. We but, don't know if but, that's four so here, years but, So here's my question though. If, and I don't know if that's true, what I've just said. Mm -hmm. But if we decide that it's true, then we could begin to make significant repairs in a, in a time that we can afford them to the high school move Rochester kids into the high school. Expand our pre-K. Expand our pre-K, maintain Stockbridge right where it is until one or two things happen. Well, hopefully solve the problem of space. And start investing way. in the high school building mm -hmm. versus putting much at all in a building that's going to be too small if one of those two things happen. Mm -hmm. And when I'm looking at this, and it's just a general thing, but Rochester High School, that overall this school is in as good as or better than any similar schools. Um, Stockbridge is this school is as fair as or better than similar schools. The elementary school is not. Overall, the school is in fair condition compared to similar schools. So the, obviously, the elementary is in the worst condition. Uh, Rochester Elementary yeah, is in And the I worst also condition. think Rochester Elementary, I think you said this, Megan, Rochester Elementary, I think, is more conducive to rental space. Yes. Mm -hmm. whether, whether the board did it as a financial the town mm -hmm. way or the town does it. Yeah. So in some ways, it just might be we have to push ourselves to say, do we have enough information? to make a decision before we start putting a lot of money into even building. Okay. My concern with, uh, you know, down the road, once again, is in our, I believe our articles of agreement, when we said we come back together, if, the, if it would be left to the town to decide if they were gonna close the school. Yep. Um, the school building? The school, so no, the school. The Stockbridge to close. And I just, yeah. I just, I would. I just don't know where Stockbridge is. It will be at that point. Well, they're like, let's all go to Rochester, or let's have choice, and that's where you we're saying school, school choice versus, versus going to Rochester. Yeah, how are we going? If we've got and four we more years, much, we have four, four more years to convince them that they should be coming. All the Rochester. projections are down with population. You know, there may be some blips here and there, but. Um, all the projections and it's and statewide for young people in yeah. but I could see you know for the next for the next until 2000 yeah I, mean, I see that the, the, the more of Carl's so idea that there's just less classes in Stockbridge but that again gets to a tipping point of how many how far down the line I don't know but if we're you know if there's is a full preschool program in Stockbridge as well well I think the biggest thing that I found interesting um, personally, was when we had that first initial uh, presentation in Stockbridge where uh, whatever her name was, Patty or Jenny or whoever the woman came Paul from. Polly. Um, Polly, yeah. And, and we talked about that, and one of the comments, you know, was that as she was going through, you know, saying, okay, well, Stockbridge, you know, you need this much, you need this much room. And we were saying, you know, we can't have special education in a hallway. We really should have a, a, a private nurse's space, blah, blah, blah. Um, the town, the, the, the pushback from Stockbridge residents saying, we, we got by, my kids were great right. in there. And, 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 you know, my kids did it too, but it wasn't ideal necessarily. But the interesting thing was just the general resistance to the idea of if our populations are going down, why are we building additions? Why are we bonding out to build more space? Yeah. Yeah. And if you follow that logic, it means that the Rochester High School is where you end up because that building, they can sit there and they can say, we can put all the Rochester kids in here. We can just make this part into a kitchen and it won't be super expensive. The biggest thing is just that Rochester, you know, you're spending all that money on those electrical panels because they're all not made and obsolete and, and you know, the, the, there, there may be some more significant roof gains down the line and window issues. 
Um, but really, if you if you look at it, that's the only building that everyone that, that could be could could everyone could yeah. fit in without because. The the recommendation is you put in it you, you you spend that million dollars redoing the elementary the Rochester elementary heat, heat system and you put an addition on it yeah. you know so I think yeah. that I think that just from what I think our communities would be supporting saying that in Rochester you're moving towards using the building that everyone fits in without putting an expansion on it you know uh, is 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 perhaps the direction that we might want to try to see is what it, people think. Is it time to bite the bullet and start saying that? Well, I think we need to, I think, I, 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 yeah, I mean, I think that needs to be something we say in that big, in that, in that bigger yeah. meeting. Mm -hmm. I think we say this is the only building yeah. that doesn't require an, a, a, an addition. Well, we want to be careful. I think following Bonnie's instruction, we want to be careful that we haven't, don't make it sound like we've already made up our minds. Correct. That but I do think end. it's okay to say the, our, the our board is confronted with a decision that has to be made sooner or later if we're going to be good stewards of the taxpayers' dollars. Because we can't go another two years and not make some of these Mr. major... Two years. Mm -hmm. like the, I don't within even, two years, I don't even think you're right. I don't, I don't think I don't, we have that. I mean, some of these things we have to do now. Mm -hmm. So the issue is, are we doing them in both buildings because we haven't made the decision yet? Are, I mean, because if you just look at the elementary school and the high school, we're going to pay thirty thousand dollars high side to inspect oil tanks when maybe we only have to pay fifteen thousand. Yeah, because so, yeah. yeah. we're only going to be using one. Well, yeah, and the big, the biggest. I mean, my biggest fear is that we stay is about staying in the elementary building is the massive heating system failure. Um, you know, January eighth. Exactly. Maybe Rochester. Or Rochester. Rochester. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the the Rochester Elementary School building, and because. You know that there there is as they say there's no backup boiler. Yeah. So if that if you know if that dies we're we're deciding okay we're going to take a week off school and move everyone to the high school right quick. Yeah. Um. You know. That's what we're deciding. That's what we're talking. Or because or or are we saying well we bite the bullet and we're putting in we're bringing in a a, 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 a renting a boiler that we're bringing it outside and we're trying to tie into the building while we rip the other one out or put you know find find the boiler we can buy in a week. Yeah. versus uh, making a planful uh, that's always right. a good way to spend a lot of money. You know, when I go back to the preschool, we cannot have full day preschool or any expansion of our current preschool next year. in our building. We cannot. Next year. That's not even more long term. That's next year. Yeah. And right. that's right. Not this coming school year, but the year after that. And I just keep going back to that. I think that is going to increase our scores. I think it's going to increase the learning of our kids it's so amazing. much. Absolutely. Goes back See, to even, if we did, really even if we did nothing, even if we assumed Raj, Stockbridge is going to stay right where it is. Right. It seems like we are wiser putting money into the high school building that does give us more space for some eventuality, whatever it might be, than putting money into the elementary school building that we know is it's an okay fit. We did fine this year, but it's a tight fit. Sorry, Bonnie. Well, yeah. and that Sorry. other thing I heard is just—he's getting even with me for writing <laughs> mathematics up there. I also heard at that same meeting, Carl, very strongly that the at least the Stockbridge community does not want to bomb this out. That they want us to plan and start to put money away. Money away to yeah, have a multi-year yeah. plan Absolutely. to fix things, and I think that's a plan. fine. Yeah. That's our thing, multi-year. And I think that's a. a I think that's a good point. I don't blame them. Five year yeah. plan, ten year plan. See, I think we're well, we've got this nice I think year. we're being better stewards of the tax dollars by investing in a it's kinda like do you use the money to put a down payment on a relatively new car or do you use the money to buy outright well, a twelve year old car? And then we're we're spending a lot more money by the longer we wait to make a decision. Right. The longer we wait and we've already taken by some people's reckoning an extra year than when we should have decided one way or the other. So we can say, okay, how about we give ourselves another six months? But I think it's sounding like, I mean, I don't know if we're at a uh, quorum or a turning point or whatever the word is there. Um, but we got to make a decision soon, and, the, and we save a lot more money the sooner we make a decision. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that I, I think that it seems like we would be super hard pressed to move to the high school building this year. Uh, yeah. We would can be do it in an emergency, but it's not ideal. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's 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 not it's not a planful it's not a Teachers. planful thing to do. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. No, but, and that's you know just, just yeah. for the purposes of the conversation, we can't. 
that's not a viable option for for this year. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> but I think we need to be be saying this is a decision that needs to be made for next year. So we need to be we need to be building out I think a timeline yep. that we are making that, that we are committing to making a decision and picking a building. Us. And at this point, from our initial research, we hired a company to help to give us numbers and information, and they tell us that really the best investment it seems to be is in the high school. Right. You know, we don't have to put an expansion on it, an addition on it. It's, well, it seems to be cheaper to repair. And one time it's in better need, condition than the other school. Right. right. So we need to, you know, but, so we need to say that and, and make that make that point clear without making it, 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 it clear that that's our decision. And we're just asking you to come to these meetings and rubber stamp things. Do we, as part of that decision, Extend it out to what I'm hearing from you know saying about decreasing population that we've also got another decision to make three years out maybe you know 2002 or 2022 about how if we can actually keep two schools open and what, yeah, I don't think what that means do. I don't think that decision is imminent I think that's something yeah. you can put as a okay next. So that the decision well, is imminent. It now. I don't think it's necessary because right. it's not I in the reality. Yeah, 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 no, sure. It's, it's going to cause this, panic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. And, yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I think when we no, present no. that, we. I think you look at, but the fact is that by but, on this. but don't forget, but, but just by moving to the building, that was the thing that everybody, a bunch of the Stockbridge people said last okay, year. Just, yeah. Once you're there, once you're in that building, well, it's inevitable. That, that all that, that everybody's going to go there. Well, what's once inevitable? we make that choice, so in other words, they're going to make that decision right. for they us. Have to, right. But what we so can why say, don't we control the message? Right, and what we can say to folks is, you know, if we're really kind of putting the elephant in the table, right square in the middle of the table, yes. it probably is inevitable because of the declining population in the state of Vermont. Yeah. When Stockbridge gets to, I don't know, 39, and Rochester gets to 72 just a little bit I know about the Ed formula, you will be down to bare bones, basic offerings, and you'll be lucky if you can do that, if we're gonna stay in two buildings, because there's so many this duplicative is, costs. This is why I don't, I, I, I think the more cohesive and inclusive we are in our decision when we finally present it, not decision, but what we're presenting to them is not just, okay, we're fixing the roofs, but it's like, here's our two year, here's three years, this is what we're gonna be, this is what we're gonna be looking at, exactly. what do you wanna do? Yeah. And if Stockbridge wants to go full choice, well then that's their choice, and they'll do that. But if, but I'm just saying that we're giving them, a, we're serving them best, I think, by not giving them any illusions about what we're looking at. I think being a real estate is because I, I don't think, you know, Transparency. Yeah, transparency. Transparency. Right. We've always right. said yeah. that. Right. Yeah. And it's not that it, if we move, if Rochester moves into the high school, it's not necessarily that it's inevitable. What it is is that it provides space if it becomes necessary. Yeah. That's another way to look at it. It's, it's a choice. Yeah, It'll be a, a choice <clears throat> to be had. And, and if you want to spend some money on one building, yeah. It's so it's like. Yeah. I want to get my head around this so we can write it out somehow. You know what I mean? Like, because we, we just made state. a good policy statement and we actually put some timeline dates in it next year, two years, three years. And I would love to write it down right now so we have a, a, a draft policy statement about the future of facilities in the RSU. See, and I think if we somehow captured the discussion we've just had for the last two hours, I'm, I'm just a fundamental believer that most people are reasonable. And there are there are some of us who get very passionate when we hear something and we have to get all our passion and our thoughts out. Mm -hmm. But if we presented... Mercy. Who's that? Mercy. If we presented... Mercy. If we pre <laughs> I'm not stepping Watch between Bruce and, and Mitch on that. <laughs> what I will say is that I think there's a very logical explanation for why you would choose the high school over the elementary school to begin investing money. Mm -hmm. There are certain people that we're never going to convince it isn't an opportunity to close the Stockbridge School. We're not going to convince them of that. Yes. We're simply going to say, I hear what you're saying. This is the reason we chose the high school over the elementary school. And we can't control their thinking. All we can do is control what we say and how well we communicate it. And I think the vast majority of people are are reasonable. Um, I agree. 
and, and, and that's the, the vast majority, majority of people are reasonable. Yeah. Now, the vast majority of people may not always show up at the meetings, but they are. Well, that's, they will understand it. That's a fun. <laughs> my Courtney's doing a drag queen, drag queen story hour oh my at, uh, at Randolph uh, Library tomorrow. Nice. She's been taking some. We'll be you know what I thought you serious. said? I thought you said a dry cleaning story hour. Like, yeah, oh, dry cleaning story hour. Show up for that. Dry they're not. They're really great readers because you just sit there and you watch the machine all the time. Yeah. So they're very good readers. Uh -huh. They'll yeah. be very good. Yeah. Um, but anyway. Don't. So I heard two things. Well, I have one question. So direction in terms of action item from you know because that's where we've kind of overflowed to from this list is that really there's the roof repair situation at Rochester and then inspect the oil tanks is what I hear us doing right now. Yes, yes. Well and, and we have to we have to stuff. test the test or repair the emergency lighting, right? Because they okay. have to be up. We can't <laughs> We can't. If something happened, and, and our, you know, the, 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 we were told that, you know, right. oh, they're fine. They just think they may not go the full ninety minutes, but they're fine. And then we find out they're not. Right. Uh, tragically, that would be bad. And I think yeah. the best so I think way we should, should well, check those. I mean, I do yeah, think it's worthwhile to to, to okay. run that ninety-minute test and then yeah. either fix it or, or 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 say, cool, it worked. Right. And I think the best way for you to do that is get a hold of Polly and find out which consultant made that recommendation oh, okay. and have them come right back and do the full testing because they already know a little bit oh, about that's what's a good that. idea. Yeah. yeah and some of it, uh, so my brother-in-law is an electrician, and he explained to me some of this. Is it? Emergency lights have been updated, so they're charging. The battery is charging while the power's on. Like there's something about the fixture itself. Right. So it may be that too. But yeah, right. and so yeah. we don't need to update the system to this fancy new. We just need to make sure our existing oh, system yeah. works, and right. we will look towards right. upgrading right. And maybe as we go forward. And maybe it's one or two that need to be replaced right. versus okay. all of them. Okay, Lindy, we just can I ask a clarification? Yeah. So on the oil tanks. Yeah. We're expecting just the high school one. As that's well, actually, there's two in the high school. We're we're inspecting those two, or are we? In school, right? Well, also the are of course we, Stockbridge. Yes. Stockbridge, yes. I, I guess I know the Stockbridge between how about the elementary building and the high school building. Well, I mean, if we think can we're give us a discount because they're out yeah. there. Yeah. Well, we're and gonna we link all three together. We're gonna put all three together. Right. Actually, there's four fit, tanks, yeah. three schools. Yeah, see what the, I mean, so, I, I so that's a cost of $80,000 if we no, did 30. No. 15, 15 per tank per each, each oh, location. Oh, so oh. it's $45,000 total of a per, oil tank inspection. Location. Actually, it's you're 60 because there's two tanks at Rochester. Do them all. Have we done, you know, have we done Stockbridge? Do we no. know what we inspected? So no, it has not been. It's on the list tanks. as well. All three should get done. Yeah. It is. We're going to do one. Yeah. Oh, well, that's all the question. Do we want to do the elementary Remember, one? Remember, there there there's uh, ramifications of this that there may have to be repairs done after the inspections are done. Yeah. What you don't know, you can't repair. Right. It, you know, there. Yeah, but that's, right. that's, that's a little scary. scary. <laughs> Well, you know, that makes it's probably against so do we want to do that to the Rochester Elementary School? It's basically, we're doing it to the high school. They're going to be there this year. We have to look at that. I think we should. If, if, if I think that's where we could go to the town at, at the same time. If that's an emergency shelter. We should look to get some of the money for the oil Good. tank, and Good we should point. be asking. So we'll town. get all. We'll oh, put it out to, to get all of them inspected at once, yeah. Yeah. and then clear there's, 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 there's four of them. Yeah. So oh, three just at Rochester. Um, three and one. Okay. Right. That, yes, should they go to the bathroom? That is no, the, uh, actually, like you know, conservative the if it, the yeah, tanks are leaking, you know, then suddenly we have an emergency That's right. You're right. School board. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the story. Okay. Oil well, tanks. Uh, once it's inspected, the state might come in and pay for repair because we're talking about polluting the White River, and the state the, will be in the interested place. in... They, they actually were going to back up an insurance policy or whatever what, uh, seven years ago or something when the tanks were supposed to be inspected. So the state was going to jump in. So I'm not sure what type of cost the state. But they might contribute. They so might contribute. to your memory, the tanks were not inspected seven years ago? I do not think so because they had, you have to dig it all up. And I don't remember any digging activity that ever happened. 
No, I don't think they have to dig it up. They have to look. They have to open they have to look at the leak. They have if they're double, them. yeah, if they're double, which I doubt they are because they're so old. But if they're double walled tanks, they just check for e for either oil or water in, in between the, space the two between walls because that means it's leaking one way or the other. Otherwise, they have to dig it up and check. Otherwise, if it's not, they have to dig it up. Right, which causes could you know there's an old tank that caused problems on an old tank removing the dirt that's been around it. Yeah, just remove it. Right. It. Depending on what they find wrong, we may have to do repairs. Which is a whole other cost that will come. That's what I'm saying. Once yeah. we get it inspected, yeah. it's not no reason not to get it inspected. It's just be ready, be for, ready for that. Ready. <laughs> you know. But once, if the tanks fail, then you might want to go to a different heating system. Right. Yeah. Right. right. We well, definitely want to look into what all of our options are. That's a good point. Because yeah. your carbon footprint. Slippery slope. And you know, even if the tanks, if that's something the board's interested in doing, even if the tanks don't fail, you may want to look into that because if the tanks fail, let's say they fail three weeks before school opens up, you don't have five months to look at other types of heating systems and inspect them out and all that. You've got to go right back to fossil fuels. So so you, so you can have yeah. above ground tank temporarily. Temporarily, right, because you've got to open school. Tanks. Yeah. But they don't do rent tanks tank. anymore, correct? Well, no, they do. No, they, they can, can but it's more sure. expensive. Rent Pete yeah. Parrish just put that. that new diesel tank at, at Skipmark because the, the what they quoted him for an underground tank was just in well, the right. So, I mean, the idea of putting it above ground is much cheaper. Um, can I just read this? Right, just and then decided, that was um, my second thing. Like what? Ethan said we should have some sort of... Well, this is just something I just decided to write, and it's just because it seemed like it was two pretty strong statements, which is within the year, due to the, due, due to the need to save money on facility repairs, the school district will need to make a decision about which, which building needs to house the Rochester campus. For the 2021 school year. Yeah. yeah. Which, Beginning with the 2021 school year. Right, yeah. Okay. Uh, It'll be on. Beginning with, yeah, okay, 2021. I'll put that in the front. And then the second one, and I'm totally available. Within, I put three years due to trends, but maybe it should be four because that's the five year turnaround uh, or, you know, evaluation. Within three years, due to trends of declining population, both student and town, the school district will need to make, and this, this next part totally open to this, to need to make a decision about which campus needs to house the combined school. I don't think we should put that out there. No. Well, no, no, but but I'm just saying. I think that'll come up. I think I'd let that come up as part of the discussion, even. Okay. I wouldn't put it out there right now. I think. It no, could. no, I'm not saying this is put out there. I just right. wanted to write it down because it sounded like we talked about yeah. it. Plus, the fact that anybody watches, as if anybody does watch these, um, you know, they're going to hear us talking about right. this. Well, they hear us talking, but it. To yeah. place that as a oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. But I'm just saying it's, it's <laughs> calls me every time. But talk to me, talk I, I mean, talk about a major yeah. action issue that we want to I think we need to know that it's out there. That we need to make this decision and I think four years right before the reappraisal time is a very valuation. I think you might want to be you may want to get a little less specific about that. That we'll need time. A, of um, discussion. I think we need discussion about school. future. I think what, 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 we, what we really need. I'm not saying, as I said, this is do. for us. This is not for publication. Right. But I think, us to understand I think what, what we need to be about. to be thinking about is what we really need to do is I think get our administrations to really let's let's you know have a, a, a discussion of how many kids makes a viable school. Because it's going to be, it, it, I think it's going to be less determinant on three years or five years or seven years or, or something like that. It's going to be determined on when we get below 40 kids, when we get below 20 kids. Where do you say this is this isn't this isn't a cohort that that, that really should be educated by themselves? Because that's what is that it, it, it doesn't Good. in my mind. Saying I the same thing is just in doing it a different right, way. Right, right. Yeah, no, I think the trigger Absolutely. that we need to be watching for, and we need to. to I think think about now because it's really hard to say. It, it, it'd be, if we said if we said okay, thirty five is the number that we need to that, that, right. that really makes it hard. You know, we we at least set that, and then we're not going and saying, gee, we're we're right around thirty five. <laughs> is that too many kids or not enough kids? Let's keep it going for one more year, and then we go down to thirty. And then I think because what I watched when I was first coming on the school board was the you know the the the, the, the closing of the Granville Hancock yeah. school where it just became. There was kind of was this group of parents that really just were like, oh, we could just be a K through two. We could be really, you know, this really that because they didn't have a planful and really an analysis of where 
where, you know, when it was educationally worse for the kids to be there versus be on a bus, you know, having some of that thought done now while we're while we know it's not the wolf isn't at the door, so that we're making a, 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 a plan that's based on you know science versus versus emotion. Because that would be my first inclination is just what you said they did the they did in Hancock or Grandma. Well, we'll just go to K two. Yep. Let's just go to K two. Well, right. Is that really what's best for her educationally this for those K two kids? Okay. So we we needed a discussion within our communities with. Within the next, within the, we what's coming? We need an ongoing discussion. We need an ongoing, need an ongoing. <laughs> I, I think one of the things I'd tie it to, too, just two things, if I could say, I'm just going to push a tiny bit. Um, to use your phrase, <laughs> I, I think the wolf may already be at the door. And we're just now starting to, to recognize it because we do have things like, special ed in a hallway, which is where it shouldn't be. We do have things like three grade levels in a classroom, which is going to work. We, none of us know if that's ideal. We do have, um, we don't have a full, how, how, how am I going to say this? What did we you, what we do the have a full-time principal to be leadership. We acknowledge that was important for raising student achievement data. We have it, but we have it in sort of a unique way. We don't have two full-time yeah, salaries in that budget. So I think the wolf is somewhat at the door, and I'm not saying that that's how we present this, but I think the kinds of things that Ethan's typing up right now, we need to preface by, you're having this very rich dis discussion because you're trying to figure out how to offer educational opportunities to kids that you guys were talking second language when I came two years ago. We still haven't been able to get it in the budget. We've been talking about an elementary math lab every since I've come along. We don't have that in the budget. So I think we're talking about some of these changes, investing in the high school versus the elementary school because it's we'll have a better facility when we're done and maybe we'll invest a little bit less money because we want to do things for kids. Mm -hmm. It's not just that we have a vested interest to go in here, there, or the other place. We're trying to figure out how to offer to our kids everything we know they mm -hmm. should be offered. So and I'm, that you turned me around with that because my my real thing is having seen towns destroyed. I didn't want to close the school. I, I still don't want to close the school. However, when you think of it from the kid point of view, three kids in you know third grade, not so cool, not so good, not a good thing to have. I, th I, th I think the way Carl phrased it is, is absolutely you know what is a viable school? Right. What is a viable? Actually, no, I think our taxpayers are going to tell us it's a viable school, what they can afford. Well, yeah, that's it. And and we need to have a plan ready when that's they start to. voting down budgets because they're they're yeah, too, I, far too much. Yeah, yeah. I, what I what I guess what I'm trying to say is, and I I, I guess I'm not being very articulate about it. Um, I can take you to some schools right now. We could drive in a car, and I could take you to some schools right now who are staying open. But in my opinion, hands down, they have no business staying open because kids are not getting what they need. <laughs> but, the, but the driving question isn't what opportunities do we want to offer our youngsters? The driving question is how do we keep our school open? And I, I too don't want to close the school, but my number one focus is on those kids that Lindy and I agree every day. And to be frank, I don't care what school we do it in or if we do it in a tent. Yeah, no, I, I, I as concur. As long as they get a solid education. There's a this momentum that. that happens where you have less kids means less programs. Less programs means more kids leaving, which which causes you to have... Well, the problem the, 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 the keeps, going down, it, right. It's a spiral. In the, well, the, the, the problem becomes is that it's often the families... The families that recognize or, or, or value education and have the ability or the means yeah, to relocate the first yeah. because the you know the, they they go out and then you're often left with the the, the families that don't have the means. And this is what happened to to to, to share out. Academy. So this is what Sheridan Academy did. This is what's just happened at Newton. Yeah. But it's what Sheridan Academy did to Rochester High School. Affluent families have, uh, who sought to have their kids in middle school somewhere else have chosen to do that. Um, the they ones that to go to Sharon Academy, or Thetford, or other and places. Paying. Yeah, they're paying because they can pay, and and also there was some scholarship money that was out there because oh, the communities, right. these schools feel like if they can get them 
super early, stay. they'll stay. Mm -hmm. And that just allows them to have more viability. So it's it's that, plus it's the, the kids that are carping it is now they, the kids that are behind who can't afford to go are now saying, I've lost my whole social <laughs> group that I've been with. And why can't I live? Well, we don't have the money to send you to wherever. Well, plus a mixed you know? class of higher or lower performing kids, mm -hmm. right? Brings, mm -hmm. can bring. But then it's not an equal more. access to education. I mean, it's access, but it's not equal, equal education. Equal opportunity. Yeah. It is not equal opportunity. Right. It further that drives the wage it between the haves and the haves. Absolutely. Yeah. So the and that's what we don't about. want to happen right. with us. We don't right. want this discussion to be about buildings. About we kids. Want, we want it to be about kids. Right. And the, the reason we're focusing yeah. on the buildings is so we can create more funds to yeah. provide opportunities for right. kids. Right. Well, I, I, like think, I think it's, it's <laughs> also important <laughs> to say, you know, we started really like initially that. kind of talking about, you know, at the beginning, some about, you know, marketing and vision. And, you know, again, let's, let's keep in mind that your second scenario, or your first scenario, actually, your second one was the things are going to decline and we might have to combine into one building. You know, your, your first scenario was, you know, we create something that's sustainable and that attracts families. I mean, if we have, mm -hmm. if, 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 we had a, if we have a quality program, what is not going to make a family in, 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 in Granville say, okay, do I want to schlep my kid up, up over 125 to Middlebury, or do I want to, you know, do I want to just come down, scoot down 100 to, 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 to Rochester, and then my kid can go wherever they want to go for high school? Guys, I have seen total white, total black schools, total, 100% African American. Those kids succeeded beyond the white parochial school. We got the whole school integrated. All they wanted was to see those test scores. These kids are doing this. I want my kid to go in that program. Right. Right. Basically. Yeah. In, in reference to possibly the high school being converted and all this and promoting and and all this, I want to emphasize the environmental aspect of it, the carbon footprint, and how important that is. If I was a young parent right now, or even thinking about having a child, I'd love to see a school system that was facing reality and participating right. before I decide to even have a child. Right, look at solar. That's on. a good so, thought, Mason Hoban. Well, I'm a little guilty. I'm like, two kids right now, I'm a, you know, I have to apologize constantly. It, it, has, <laughs> the, it has been brought up many times of, oh, well, has anybody looked at putting solar on the roof of the high school or it's using perfect it? solar. You know, it's stuff like that. <coughs> That's the right orientation. Perfect. Right, you know, that we could start looking in that direction. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it. If we know that that's, there's exactly. a decision being exactly. made, that the that future. is the building that we're going to put our and that's, resources and that's, into. That's proactive. That's yeah. proactive. Exactly. That's proactive. It's proactive so in, you, in managing our money and managing our educational situation. So if you take those three bubbles, yours, I think, and someone else's in Mason's and put them together, Lindy and I have to get those tanks inspected. My guess is at least one of them is going to fail because they're all ancient. If the board were sitting here saying, okay, we're going to do, and let's say one fails, we're going to do an above ground fuel tank, whatever that takes, because we have to keep the buildings open, mm -hmm. while we plan for what type of fuel, of permanent heating system are we going to put in this building? <laughs> that's sort of seizing the moment and looking forward and saying, yeah. that's worth this and that. That's why we're spending $15,000. It starts to make this so much, just, just the, my brain just clicks over that, you know, this whole idea of, 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 focusing on one place, I mean, what could happen in this one place? And if we think about for the kids, for the kids, for the education. What opportunities we want to offer yeah. to those kids? And it's a great physical space. Yeah. It has great opportunities there. It really does. <laughs> a couple of things, a couple of things that, this is a couple of other reasons I would, I would kind of, and I understand it's the board's decision, but I would advocate strongly for us not losing complete control over the high school building is that you can't find, I don't think, an elementary school in the state of Vermont that has any better uh, music room or drama facility mm -hmm. in terms of that, like a gem that's sitting in the middle of that high school. Mm -hmm. Certainly, I, I guarantee you, not outside of Chittenden County. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, yeah. I, 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 The auditorium? Yeah, it's wonderful. The shop, the shop is great. I know, I mean, we had a great elementary school shop program when I went to school. Really? Excellent. That's why I learned to be a builder, really. Um, you know, it's just uh, those kind of things. I mean, we didn't put it on our list, but it's 
such a basic thing. They did it at the summer camp. Oh, makerspace. They, they did. Yeah, they, did they did this part of one planet. Did all that. Week. I saw those. Was all week. <laughs> I was sitting there yeah. talking to Lindy one day when they were making tools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like bang, the, bang, the, bang, the morning is very quiet because they're at swim lessons in mm -hmm. the afternoon. It's woodworking. I feel that we um, have to educate our kids more wholly now than ever before. Meaning, like, take over a lot of what you we maybe learn from our parents mm -hmm. that the school really needs to be teaching it now um, you know so it does that space does offer some more opportunities with the, the FCS room that has you know small kitchen area um, or canning, or canning you're right freezing yeah, we that. could do a lot with parents right you know I mean we're setting, we <clears throat> certainly kids succeed without parent help, but the data is clear that they do better with parent help. Think if we had parent classes, how to read to your kids, mm -hmm. how to, you know, reinforce this, how to, what toys, what do you speak, how do you speak to kids, you yeah. know, what, what language do you use? So there's, if we could offer those total community kinds of programs, the pre-K, parent programs, all of that after school care, they'll come, they will come. And that will fill up with the space. Yeah. Well, I have a, 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 I like all these ideas. Um, what is your, from the yeah, principal superintendent, um, what do you guys feel the state, what will, what is, because I feel like the state is making, the AOE has this constant kind of changing of rules, making new requirements that make it harder for small schools to exist in rural areas. Well, Where is the state going to stop and saying, well, are we going to close? I, I, I just, I feel, like they're I, I feel like they're closing everything in rural areas. And well, I think it's really disappointing. I, and I, I get concerned about us being so enthusiastic, but we're going to, we're, we've got the best intentions. But what, like in the overall sense from like the state, like, are they going to allow like our communities to even have elementary schools? Like, I mean, what, in like 10 years? Right. Because I don't feel like we're being supported rurally at all by our state. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think if you look back at where they've been going, and of course the administration's changed and legislature changes and they have different priorities and things like that, but uh, pretty much what's going on is this, we were not going to be sustainable with so many schools and they, they just needed to consolidate in order to be able to stay viable. Um, because these places were just not not viable anymore. Um, the other thing is they seem to. I and I'm not I'm not advocating for this, but they just seem to be laying more on SUs than they ever did before. And and you know it's really difficult. I mean, uh, from audits to busing to special ed to all the different accountability, uh, all kinds of different accountability to data. Uh, we just, we're being asked to do an awful lot more. And I'm not whining, I mean, it's just the reality of every day, you know. They do not want these things coming out of individual little school districts. And, and, and I know that every time we get to town meeting time, or before when SU budgets are about to be passed, nobody wants to add to the SU budget. That's like taboo, you know? And I don't want to take things out of your own budget to put into the SU. I mean, we've had this big debate about technology services and how much, you know, we want to take away from where, where is the budget for tech, tech people? We've left it in your budgets for your schools. And, you know, it, and their discussion was, should we take that on as the SU? No, because I don't wanna, I don't wanna make the SU budget go crazy because it won't pass. Everybody will say, no, no, no. You'll have it out of your budget, it'll cost you less, but it's gonna cost something and we're gonna have it in there. So I don't see it. I mean, that's what the trend is. I think they feel like they can control or dictate to SUs maybe more than they can to local school board. And do you think it's, ah. but also follow up with Megan, do you think it's, oh, so that do you think another Act 46 is out there yeah, that's gonna we, reduce even more? Well, there's gonna have to be some time go by first, but uh, I, don't, oh. I don't think it's gonna be, it's gonna happen naturally. If you look at the projections that I gave you, mm -hmm. uh, you know, by, it's supposed to go down, you know, another 
eight to 10, 12 percent the next couple of years. I mean, and this is this projection goes all the way out to 2026. This light line is the future. This is currently the, and you can see we, we hit our pinnacle in 1990, and it's been blipping a couple times, but mostly it's just downhill. People just aren't moving here. And also not having any kids. People don't have right. yeah. There's not necessarily like less families around that's here. Right. That's right. That's right. The other thing. Less kids. I mean, one. There, there, two, there was a big bump. The last big bump I remember in Vermont was after 9-11. Uh, but a lot of people left the city. Oh. Left the city. Get out, get out of the city. So not that I would ever wish anything like that, but with some of the environmental costs and things yeah, like that I that are happening in cities, I think that some people out. are. I think some people are thinking about rural environments, and we could be that. You know, we could be that, is, that place. That's very true. When we moved up, um, I moved up in 1969 the first time. We almost doubled Gaysville population. There were 24 of us who moved up within this area from well, the yeah. yeah. And our kids went to school, hmm. and we were on the select board. It's in Rochester. And in Rochester, yeah. in Gaysville, there were 24. we got 20 a big family. <laughs> <laughs> right, but I, what they're saying escape. is, yeah. I agree with a lot of the environmental changes that are happening. That's People true. are trying to get away from the seaboards yeah. as well. There's a right. lot, there yeah. is a lot of populations in the cities. and. Mm -hmm. Again, back to us having a really great True. school that has True. great scores, that has great Which support. Which is part of the community, too. That's yep. part of the advancing community. The other thing gonna, is, too, it, this is a big retirement yeah. state, guys. I mean, when I right. call my eye doctor down in New York, he said, you're like the fourth person who's retired to Vermont. And these grandparents are bringing kids with them. Well, there was an I, article not too long yeah. ago called the gray, the the gray, the gray, the gray state, not yeah. the green mountain state, but mm -hmm. the gray state, and just talked about just the numbers of people that were retiring here. Yeah, my whole yeah. mountain. Well, it's all it's all interconnected. I think to answer your question, there's not affordable housing, there's not the job opportunity in these amazing valleys that we live in. But Bonnie and I just had this conversation the other day. At 22, when I graduated college, I could not afford to come back to my home state and work. I would have to move back in mm -hmm. with my parents, which was like, <laughs> <laughs> That's what they were saying. Lindy, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> they know it. It's a conversation we have frequently. <laughs> She didn't have that conversation about but you being the black. Of course, she didn't <laughs> say they were saying no. She didn't say that part. Um, but it's one of those things. Or I could live somewhere where I could afford to live on my own as a young teacher at the beginning. Of my, it's just yeah. one. Of the, it's all intertwined. So we need like. It's that Chamber of Commerce piece mm -hmm. Bruce was talking about That's earlier true. too. And it really surprises me that I would actually step up and defend the state of Vermont at this point, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't think, what I learned going through Act 46 is that they weren't being sinister and mean-hearted. Vermont, basically, Vermont's finances are doing this. They are dwindling. Absolutely. They are shrinking. Yeah. 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 For business uh, our bond too. rating bumps yeah. against being dropped every few months. It's not like they're holding all this money up there they don't want to give to schools. They simply can't sustain the number of schools. That We had some schools in Vermont when Act 46 kicked in that had fewer than 30 students in them. And they ju it's just not sustainable. On one side, it's not sustainable. On the other side, it's probably not That's necessarily it, great for be, kids. Because I, of all the regulations that you have. Okay, you it's not a one-room school house. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Oh, well, okay. continue with the population aspect. I think it's really important to start getting away from the stealth denial. The fact is, is that with the temperature rising in many parts of the country, Vermont is one of the sweeter spots. And I think it's time to start recognizing that it's not going to be about the economy, why people are moving here. The economy will be recreated when they get here. Because the, the environment so, is good. So, so in your projections of five years, I mean, they're already talking just this summer, new records in Greenland, temperature heat bubbles. They, you know, I. I don't know for sure, but for my lifetime, I'm looking at the science mm -hmm. and I'm not seeing, I see a disconnect and it's referred to as stealth denial it, because we're all don't want to believe it. Mm -hmm. 
but how do we deal with the influx of population that may be banging at our door shortly? Within five years. By, having that, yeah. by having that by having that infrastructure, nice. and this is more on a town base, to have the internet, to have the broadband, to have the broadband, because a lot of people can come up and they don't need a company up here that they're they working at. They can do a lot of right. remote work. That There's is a lot more remote nowadays. Than right. Oh, so yeah. again, that's just back to we need to draw them to our really yeah. exciting, yeah. School. highly performing yeah. school. Just. All right, now, 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 now I just want to say the word. Global warming is going to save our schools. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be oh, oh, as well as the world. world. Let's publish that one. Well, I think I, I, think <laughs> I might have heard me say so, another 9 11. <laughs> 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 we are at 1250 now. Oh, it's a shame. School popular. Sorry, go. We are at 12.50 right now, which, so is an hour we're just gonna we're, uh, which is what we started about an hour behind. Is there any more action items that we need to finalize before we or we mm. need to take another little bit, or, or is it time for lunch? I think it's time to get up. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's yeah. move around and yeah. have some food. Yeah. You no, know, I think yeah. that makes sense. Do I think let's do? But can we keep lunch to? I think half let's an keep hour? it fast. Fast as, as, as you can make those burgers. Well, as fast as you can get to. <laughs> I'll turn on the grill. No, no, no. Go, go, go. Okay, chop, chop. Um, so let's. <laughs> do you guys want to like? I mean, go there has out? been. It yeah. does yeah, feel. It does feel like. Yeah. It does feel like there's been a natural progression. Yeah. 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 Ye
You don't have any. That might help with transparency. Not that I know of. Who sends out the AC, the WR? Yeah, we don't get mail from the SU. The SU annual report. That's included in it. our annual report. Okay. It wouldn't be a, uh, yeah, this is the kind of thing it's like, just, okay, got yeah, it. This, we're going to look at all the reports and we're just going to break them down. But so anyway, things that we should, let's start with this, things we should improve for the annual report. Number one, what? The entire, entire budget. Entire budget. <laughs> um, the entire budget. Entire budget, but saying that's 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 vague. What do you mean? Well, make sure I'm explaining, explaining the More budget. proofreading. Of more the proof. Right. Okay. Start it earlier. More right. proofreading. Okay, right. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And have it out earlier so we can have an inform Start. or yes. have a meeting before the vote is what I think. We also think. talked about information that we can have earlier so that we're not bringing everything together at the last minute. Like there's certain budgets and certain things that we can have mm -hmm. months in advance. Right. right? Well, if, if you come across, if you have a picture of a kid from one activity or a class, you've That's proved right. it that it's okay that everybody be mm -hmm. in it. Pictures okay. throughout the report. Yep. But get people to look. Well, well we have to. We'll have to discuss about uh, um, amount we want to spend on the on report. Yeah. yeah. But if, even if it's black and white, black yeah. and white doesn't cost that much. But right, just as we're uh, throughout the year, as things come along, it would be good to have one point person to, that it all gets sent to. I'm going to suggest that we ask Tara to help us put together a working calendar mm -hmm. because That's that, actually on our that makes all this happen in the right time. We're, 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 we've got a calendar number eight is calendar. Well, I'm at a working time. calendar to develop the annual report. Right. Who does what by when? Calendar. I think. Well, yeah, we need uh, intermediate action points so we, we can make sure that we're hitting. Whoa. We're hitting our term. I've never heard that before. Intermediate. Uh, student count by town and by grade level. Mm -hmm. I heard the communities ask for. Mm -hmm. Student count by. And including the Sunday um, towns. Right. Because we had to, I had to like break it out on the mm -hmm. spot. And what? By student count by? Town and grade level. Grade level. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and also, the, you know, where our kids are going. Tuition. Um, and I'm going to have um, Would that explana come out the explanatory that notes physical? throughout. That's true. I think we're also like also the physical count in the building. Well, the tuition was in there, yeah, but tuition. they wanted the physical count. Somebody right. asked for that. Yeah, physical. Yeah, physical count. So this is four kids going to Woodstock. And right. Two going to Sharon. Yeah. And right. Six like, so going to we there are, are, we have, The seventh graders are all in these schools, so we have a grid. Here's all the, the receiving schools. Here's all the grades. Right. And, you know, there's Here's a matrix that yep. says. And then at the bottom of the tuition count, they wanted um, how many, because we put them all together. They just wanted to know, like, how many of that total was were Rochester students and how many of that total were Stockbridge residents. So they're like, charting out, like, oh, a lot more specifically. Yeah. Yeah. A lot more data. We need to tell them more data. how many are tuition students from Pittsfield and how many more Well, uh, they wanted that they they want know, on the in building, yeah. but for the tuition list. Yeah, they needed to know that, you know, X number were Stockbridge residents total, they didn't, and X number were Rochester. Yeah, yeah. although we should we should think about it if we want to. Or just you know, have that. Like, yeah. I, I mean, it's... How much what, do we want to... Right, how much oh, do we want to uh, differentiate the kids because, uh, by, by Stockbridge versus Rochester? Because I don't want to start having the conversation about, well, all those Rochester kids are going to that fancy, you know, uh, Woodstock or going to Middlebury and the well, and Stockbridge kids are going to, to Sharon County right. where it's cheap. But I think we could just say 50 Rochester, 50 of these 100 kids are Rochester and 50 of them are Stockbridge. Yeah, I think that would be fine. Carl, that reminds me too, because sometimes the, accurate, the, accurate, yeah, the data is inaccurate around tuitions. We should probably list all the schools our youngsters go to and what the actual tuitions are yep. for those schools. So at least they're looking at facts. Yep. Yep, I agree with that. I think we also would be nice if we had a formal, I mean, we, we often talk about it in the principal's note, but it'd be nice if we had something formal about kids' performance and student outcomes, so that yeah. we're saying, you know, in here, here's the grading, or here's the testing scores, or here's just the general, how the kids are performing. Student achievement. You know, beyond, you know, like I said, beyond anecdotally in the, the, the superintendent and the principal reports. Do we, did, now when Brown Gardner was speaking, was he speaking of what in detail of like, okay, so the PE, you know, budget, like does he just want like a description of like, this pays for PT 
take care of two days so it was like a quick like little thing that happened. I think and, well I don't know that that was what he was asking other community members I were think, and so then can, like, the vision of what's going on yeah like what that dollar yeah. amount pays for and no, that's, I, that's just what I'm talking about a week there in, but in this the is meeting. but this is yeah. this is where I think as each number changes <clears> in the thing we put a Two lines there that say the following numbers, the following yeah, this reflects all of them part. reflects this yeah. for this particular position. This person teaches this number of days at this yeah. at these schools. So and I, I think I think let's let's, let's err on the side of too much information this year. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think Without there's anything that's that's you know confidential. But he also not. Rob right. Gardner also wanted that for the SU. That, yeah, well, I think that's is, what we're telling you. Is right. that, I don't know if that and will it, actually happen on the SU level. But no, well, we could do it. We should. We can take that data and we can break it out and give it our explanation and, and, and make it our job to do it. I think Tara being in from the beginning will. Yeah. We'll be make great. it easier. Oh, yeah. 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 We're going to we'll, have the same Tara, yeah, business yeah. manager <laughs> in 2020 yeah. that we have now. I give her a bonus. Should we do a toast? A toast? Yeah, absolutely. Toast to Tara. If she sticks with us after these last two weeks, she'll stick with us. Yeah. She's due for her evaluation this month, and I'll be very happy with yeah. what she's doing. Oh my it's, God. It hasn't been perfect, but she's, and she's had a lot of stumbles, but uh, not because of her own fault, but because of what she's been presented with mm -hmm. to get over. And, and what do you, you know, those stumbles, improve her performance because Absolutely. she learns from that That's right. and uh i'm i'm very she's tough she's really tough it's and because of the way the she was raised she's yeah, done very exactly. well she's you know, um, so i think great. the other thing that would help us flush this out is at a at a meeting like even at our meeting down at the that's coming up would be to just put a general community members if there's anything specific you think we should include in the annual report please drop an email to the board chair like, carl <clears throat> lets people feel that you're including the herald too was it in her or put them on the pages mm -hmm. i mean you may get no response but at least you've reached fine. out yeah. and said yeah i think student not just uh student performance data or achievement data but just what we're doing with our kids in general. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to know. Yeah. Right. Like their way of being a part of it. Because if, if, no, if it's a book of numbers, very few, except for the Who wonderful care. loving geeks of us, <laughs> are actually going to look through the whole yeah. thing. Right. You know? They, they want to know what. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful <laughs> loving. It was it was loving. It was complicated. Wonderful <laughs> and loving. Because yeah. 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 you know it's a wonderful and loving Brian before. Brian tells me there all the time, so I'm OK with it. Geek is a couple. I tell my sister, I'm so lucky to have Jenny, Amy, and Carl oh all as numbers people on our board. No, um, Jenny. What the, <laughs> and maybe this means, you know, what the students are doing. You know, we talk about what we want from our principal's report, you know, what, what what kind of things, you know, is it illustrated? Do we have students write for the, you know, do some writing in there? The thing is, if you put some creative stuff through the thing, people are more likely to look at the thing. I think yeah. we should have student artwork in it. Yeah, student yeah, artwork. Sure. Exactly. I'd like to see, um, there was a handout about your homestead tax and how the tax rate that, is, that we're voting on affects your, um, and the, the gentleman, I guess, passes it out with start with every year. And I think it would be yeah. helpful yeah. to have something like the implications of, of these tax rates, keeping in mind your homestead tax. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's a chart that is going to go beyond a lot of people, but there, there are some people. There are, yeah. I think it'll be um, good information for yeah. Yeah. Uh, our a very complicated page. I mean, I've, we've gone over it several times. Some of that, that one page, you know, with the columns that goes down and goes yeah. the holy smoke. Yeah, no, I'm not even talking else? about that. I'm talking about this yeah. is a, a statewide thing that he got. If this it. is your property, this is how much your right. taxes oh, okay. are. If, if so that is 10 minutes. Great. So they can do that. I think we've got enough to start with. Mo moderator. Moderator. Oh, oh we got to talk about moderator because that was killing me. That yeah, was killing me. Thank you. Was a, and was do that at a time. Right. Moderator. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Where'd you get it? Town West. Can you type this the, off the, the town? The general Stockbridge town moderator. What? Can you? Because I thought it, it was. It has been for over yeah, 30 it years. Was, it was a problem for me. Well, the guy who did it the previous year at Rochester, he was good. Yeah. Dan 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 that's what I'm saying. This was a problem. This guy did not control the meeting. And it's totally the moderator's job to control the meeting, and and I I had a real problem with it. I mean, I thought we have to be careful. Of that. 
moderator. Yeah. Yeah. You can't yeah. do it, but I mean, I just need to. Maybe it'll be in Rochester this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. maybe we well, just I think it should that. be on the list of something that we're but all he is, he setting up prior to and not having But he's been elected as the moderator. He was elected as the moderator. From the So unless we unelect him. No, you you elect him every year. So we'll elect a different one right now. He's our moderator for the year, but when. So we won't be offending him if we elect Dan McKinley? I, think, I don't think he wanted him to do it anyway. No, he did not. He was like, well, okay. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, also, as uh, J um, she brought up list, town just list, double check who's residency be because check we're supposed all those to have things. a residency. You know? Just make sure we're double checking on those things ahead of time. Yeah. So technically, the town clerk should sit at the door and check people right. before they come into the gym. So this is all communication. We just need to make sure we have set up prior to. And the first meeting. motion should be to let people like Lindy and I and Bruce join the assembly because we shouldn't even be sitting with you guys until you guys approve us to do that. Right. Because oh, we're not okay. town residents. Because we're not yeah, town no, residents. The, the, oh. we gotta, we got to follow it by the book. And I just added this one. I don't want people to think I snuck anything on here. Our business manager every year for the last like seven or eight years has get up and in three minutes explained it the explained it explained the big pieces of the funding yeah and we're hearing back from people they're finally starting to understand it because it's really not all that complicated once you get to the bottom of what we need to raise and then it's pretty straightforward and common where level. our income for comes from exactly in the common level appraisal and how it and she takes about three minutes and she's done it for five or six years and people are actually starting now to feel like they understand some of it well that's because you've had a business manager for the same business yeah. <laughs> Same one too. Okay. Is that all that for this page? Yeah. <laughs> is that it for this? I think that's good. I think the committee is um, me, Ethan, <laughs> and Megan, Jeff, and Bonnie, sure. and we will really just kind of, you know, keep going forward with this and get back to everybody. Make sure. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, so let's My just be clear. Let's Draw set out. a date um, by the October meeting. Yeah. We'll have something. We'll have a, a basic out outline. Way. And maybe some examples. Yep. Great. Okay. That'd be excellent. October, whatever that whatever is. Whatever that first Tuesday in October is. Mm -hmm. First. Who's going to beat it? Who's going to win first? That's your birthday. October 1st. It's October 5th. It's October winning 5th. very quickly. What's that? It's <laughs> my 75th birthday. Oh. Happy birthday. Happy Thank birthday. You. No, we'll Don't get it out of the way now. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> oh. Well, when we get there. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Good. Next. Okay. So. Um, Look at that. So efficient. Jenny um, had started talking about a, a crane. And now we're only 15 minutes behind. Yay! Look at that. We caught up. <laughs> Sweet. About a calendar. Yeah. Yeah, I yep. think we talked about. I think you had talked about it too. Uh, Google Doc. That way, some other mm -hmm. people could um, put it in. Just kind of stuff to remember throughout the year, like contacting the board of trustees. Yep. Um, I don't remember what else we talked about. I don't know if we want to. Well, again, uh, all, all everything we'll to do with the, the um, a lot of the annual meeting, meeting prep for the well, annual meeting. Well, we even miss teacher appreciation week and stuff too. Yeah, so like you know, the, we should put that that's stuff. That's definitely. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, who's going to manage this calendar? I can start it. Uh, I don't know if it's something that since it's Google Doc, anybody could go in and. Mm -hmm. um, Work on it. Okay. Um, right. And it, and since it's a Google Doc, it's, it's linked to all of our SU um, right. uh, emails. Right. So as a new board member comes along, they would as well mm -hmm. ease, immediately have access to it. And then once it gets set, it's just we follow it. Right. Just just tweak it. And Tara should weigh in on it because there's mm -hmm. certain times we have yeah. to set tuition rate. We have to exactly have right announced by. Yeah. What else? What else do we want to set? Well, should we put on? This? I mean, I think this has been really. Uh, a helpful meeting. I think it's been effective, and I think we move forward. Should we have it more than once a year? Should we have another one? I don't think it'd be a bad idea to do a, 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 a twice a year. Like well, when school's summer. actually in session. Yeah, yeah. when we're we actually we 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 party at the gym. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
Is that we, that'd do be, you think would be, 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 I mean, I don't know, when would that be? Yeah. January or February? Is that too late? Or is that? I don't know if we're voting May. Well, you want to make sure May. you identify all the numbers. In. Right. Well, right. most of them. Well, we can even put together. I would say February, February. February would be probably a good time because we'll, tuitions will, rates will be yeah. set. When we'll have, we'll, we'll, we'll starting to have an idea of where families are going to be going. And When's yep. the vacation? Well, uh, our February. annual meeting has Last to be warned week. by the mm -hmm. beginning of April. So right. we should be on at least one or revision one or two of a budget by February, though, well, shouldn't we? Yes. Well, hopefully. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Should be. We Let's may still be state. waiting for some big numbers. So, exactly state, state, yeah. 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 But still, we state can does. start something in February. Right. Well, well, I think we should go ahead and, and think about doing a retreat. And then if it corresponds well, with doing budget work at the same time, great. If not, then we're just going to we'll, And we're also, we also have yeah. to keep in mind that beyond just the regular business of this of this next board year, we're also dealing with yes. our building. Yeah. You know, our, our building this is and ongoing. And figuring out who the, you know, how we're reaching out to yep. the community and. Right, yep. So we can't wait till that. We need an interview. Oh, that was an we, we do. February. We do. Yeah, and and okay. not not try to dovetail it with any budget. Right. And yeah. let's just do, we'll look at a February retreat. Yep. I, I, I think it'll just help us make sure that the things that we're talking about right now will be moved in that direction for the, so the next school year we're not scrambling and we're, we're moving with you know intention so and can i just put an action item out there because we mentioned a while ago and i don't want to let it up was um talking with the tech guy about our web page yes that we should put we're somebody on that before we leave today are we yeah i like i have to go on our website like we need to have our board emails accessible. Oh, Courtney, Courtney was having a field day with it. Right. So if we could have maybe one the board member um, be the task master with Bruce over here to make the connections with the technology guy. Oh, I know. Right. That makes so sense. I can certainly talk to him. Yeah. So you would so updating, you know, and, and then you get out to us. Okay, we need pictures. Okay, we need stuff like that, and then you know we can manage that mm -hmm. stuff. I'd also like to suggest um, another way of communicating besides the website is that the schools have been putting out newsletters and I know the school, I know Lisa took it upon herself and Bonnie to, and Lindy to, to update the school board portion of it, but maybe the school board should be putting out, you know, if there's a monthly newsletter that we should be giving like a monthly statement. Yeah, I think Jenny used to give us that. I was going to say, we can create it. I thought you did. I was like, oh, you guys are so good. No, we just emailed Jenny and she'd send it to us. Okay, thank you. But along the lines of this new web, the updated web pages, that we will, as things happen, be able to, to when we make a decision on something, yes. or as something happens, we'll update that page immediately. We just need to get the word out that please go right, to check thing. this page. Right. We, we're, that's where right, we find the latest and greatest information. So one of the, the first Herald. things is also, though, is about the web page is to get an active school board page right. that we can all have access to, mm -hmm. you know, so that we can. I think the other thing that will make the budget a little easier this year now that, as Lindy said, we've played a year of whack-a-mole here, we're, we're sort of starting in a different places. It would be our intent to get pieces of the budget out to you throughout, I mean, the budget information, the annual report information to you throughout the year. Like, yeah. there's no reason in October we can't tell you how many kids are at Sharon, how many kids are at Woodstock. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you already have that. This is what I'm right. talking about. We, we should summarize have a it in the annual report. I mean, right, our goal yeah, is to have a template for the a report, template yeah. for the report right. but then we're eventually just saying, right, picture here, or maybe right. the design's we'll a little the different. We'll get the information that's yeah. But there yep. should yeah. be a more smooth flow of information mm -hmm. yep. than just yep. coming to you all at once. Yep. And I think we, this goes back to the report, we discussed it being in a Word format rather than a PDF format. Yep. So then we can adjust headings. We can change, yeah. you know, if we wanted to. Well, as I say, I work with this very nice design program that I use for all my posters and all my publicity for the theater. And man, you start getting used to it. Yeah. And it's just, you really can design stuff. And it's just and it was a visual. in Word that you would want. Then you, can, you, can, you can insert anything like yeah. that into that. But, um, but anyway, but I think just working with Word, Word these days too has got a lot more design elements than it used to. Yeah, it's, it's just funny because uh, a couple versions, at least in the Stockbridge book ago, book ago, there was 
don't we the, the, the decision was made to move away from word to PDFs after they uh, uh, there were some cut and pasting issues that happened and then stuff got dropped because the documents were edited were edited uh, right okay. but again I think I think regardless what it comes down to is having more time for proofreading and more time yes. yep. for 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 approval process and not a okay uh, we got to get you know, it needs to be in the mail on Friday, so we got to get it printed on Tuesday and right. just stamp, you know, yeah. stamp all night stamping it. Right. Yeah, exactly. You get one of those postal meters, it makes it a lot easier, too. Vitting, 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 vitting. Even if we use it once a year. Um, good, but we still, we're actually past that. Yes, we're on calendar. On, calendar. So um, I think that, that would make sense a, yeah. for Jenny to start. To can, 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 Jenny, can you, do you need some help or do you want to do it? Well, I think I pass it around and everyone else can. Right. And you just, I don't think we need to create yeah. separately for it. Yeah. Yeah. Will yeah. you include Tara on that? Yes, yeah, definitely. I think it was November we, is when you have to give me to, or November or December, you know, yeah. the Board of Trustees. Yeah, I thought it was start. November, but I don't know. I think they said December. I'm like, no, we're doing November. Yeah. Let's be a month on time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to wait till that. Like, look, do we have to do that? Do we have to do that? The calendar for the annual report should be embedded in a large order. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Stockbridge is just a letter, Janie. Stockbridge is just by a letter. April, okay. By their April mm -hmm. meeting, Stockbridge trustees just need like, a letter. Oh, we have, we did. Fill in a cell that whole year. Yeah. 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 I didn't know that until more than two weeks. So do we have to I think we actually have to go to the meeting. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 Say that yeah. right on top of our export it to the to, to, to the Excel onto Word. Yeah, yeah. 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 you can copy it. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. that's what I wanted. So you'd have yeah. to make yeah. sure that it's to the, to the school right. finished. Right. Then put it in there. Because then every time you make a change, it goes back in the school. Right. Yeah. You can't. If you copy and paste, you can't edit it. School basically shows. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I'm just thinking about. And then if we want to do this text in between, we got our own time. Oh. You can put tables in the text. Like text, text. I'd like to see how that prints out though, because I just feel like it doesn't. That's, that's exactly it's boxier. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. There's yeah. more space, whereas Excel, you can adjust everything so they're all e equal. Uh -huh. Well, in an Excel sheet though, you can also unhighlight the the columns and rows so you don't they don't print, and right. so you can just you print write within much. the Excel. I guess that's something. I mean, hopefully you know oh, that it worked out. Yeah, because that's just something I. I yeah, I'm talking. I have if such you, a clear you, vision in my if head. If you do the report the in Word, like. it will look fine. Right, and uh, just copy and paste the yeah, tables. Yeah, fine. yeah. We just have to know, and then we'll just go and know which one has right. to be replaced when they're updated. Okay, good. Uh, calendar. So, should you want a list of all the things that should be on there? If we want to, I will. Wouldn't that be helpful? Yeah. Anybody bring things? Is the, the November meet with the board of trustees around? Yeah. Or concerts. In terms yeah. of time, Jenny could just put the calendar up, and when we see it, we could all list our things on. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. Instead of taking okay. time now to identify. Yeah. 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 Oh no, I gotta take time now. Right. <laughs> um, okay. Our flexible. Right. I mean, the, the thing you should put on is our annual meeting. Yep. Well, you want to know you when report them. cards come out? I mean, you want that kind of stuff? I think, I like, I think yeah. it's, 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 it helps us, it helps us start, know, do our know, job to know season, yeah. to know all the stuff that Maybe. the administrators know. Of dates or what our students are testing. Not a chance. I'm just saying, not yeah. a chance. Oh, no, I know way more than that. I like parents that know that too. I don't so. think no, no, I just meant I wasn't telling you everything I know. That's what I was saying. Student data. Well, is. There's no school calendar like that has all this information on it already. That's actually our plan to get out a calendar that has the the concert dates, the comps, the open house. Right. So if we had access to that, and then we wouldn't have to put it on our own right. board calendar. That's true. That and maybe the board calendar should be more our action items. I, so it's your working calendar. calendar. It's, it's, our working it's, calendar. Yeah. it's just yeah. stuff you calendar. have to do something yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. That was an so it'll be two separate calendars. Yeah. yeah, there'll be a school calendar yeah. and then the school what? board calendar. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was an SU calendar. Yeah, because you're working right. calendar. We're only allowed to have one. You need ones. to take action. Yeah. So, so we don't. Yeah, so yeah. you're an no. SU calendar. Concert, right. yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the meetings gets put on, yeah. which is good. Concert, you're just mom. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, that's the thing. Is one of the goals I thought part of the calendar was supposed to help us see too was to say, okay, these meetings are the, the meetings about the, yeah. the budget. So they're going to be sucked up by that. So where can we fit in to the, the, the you know, uh, yeah. so the, when do we have that lull so we can address talking about the building, the, our, you know, our, our second language program or talking about our, 
our uh, okay. whatever. Yeah. You know, as under you know, when when can uh, when we, do we have more opportunities for Jane to te teach us about literacy? That's a really good. Yeah, oh yeah so God. I would Sorry. love that. Stand up, Jane. We want to see your shirt. Stand up. We want to see your shirt. So here's the deal. If we don't learn, it means Janie has to talk. About what? <laughs> Not yet. Do I have anything to say? Stop it. We, we have another skit. You hang her on. It's your, you're you get everything you can She has a whole lot of items later. It goes like this. Every more can I say. <laughs> we get to okay. each other, Bruce. Um, <laughs> So are we yeah, happy right. with the calendar then? Enough discussion. Jenny is going to to, to create one, and and, mm -hmm. and it will be our working calendar, so I and we'll start to. Want to yeah, Jenny, I'd like to, and maybe I think our first action should be um, the the timeline. It'll go into this calendar. Right. What we think a timeline is for the annual report, it, working back yeah, from right, the yeah, meeting, or I mean, working back from actually the mailing day. And then working back printing day, yep. and then working back is how, yeah. Right, that and so way, then we know yeah. when. When then right. we start figuring out, okay, when should? But uh, we can find out from you, you know, when when most likely <laughs> DOE or whatever it's called is going to have us AOE. It's going to have budget item, budget numbers and stuff like that. Right, and that's what we'll do in our we'll committee, yeah. and then we'll apply for we'll we'll have Tara on the list, so and Tara on the list, so she can add some important things too. Are there grants that we should be putting on the calendar that we, as a school board, should be like aware of dates? That well, that make sure that we, I mean, like they're getting attended, like in case we switch. Yeah, say like, you guys are here forever, but like that we know that up as a principal. I'm trying to think. I, you so know, we, you wouldn't put grant deadlines on your working calendar. Your no, working, not my. Yeah, okay, that's true. Your working oh, calendar is yeah. really stuff that the board has to take action on. Okay. And right. Cynthia Powers tells us. <laughs> oh, you. Okay. She lets us know when the grant deadlines are. Right. Okay. I mean, just typically that's what a word. No, no, no. Okay. Well, like right. you were, you had that for our school. Yeah, that one. I'm pretty sure it came up in like September, is, October. And is that on anybody's radar? Is that on the, uh, the people who would tell you that there's grants coming up? Is that a grant that's on that radar? So I guess that would be for right. Bruce. Well, I guess so. the, the question I would we would ask our you know, our principals is, is, you know, do you feel like you're getting enough? You know, because some of the, the it, sometimes the grant coordinators seem to focus more on yeah. like the titles and the bigger grants, you know. And are we getting, you know, do do we need to be? Are we getting the, enough support? So we're getting the farm to table grant opportunities. We're getting the tobacco mm -hmm. and some of the yeah. wellness grants and the various like matching grants for kitchen equipment and things like that, or is that something we should be doing No, I think they come out pretty regular. I think they're pretty regular. Now, if it's like something that's local funds um, and not driven by like a large, like, like, like bird families? You're egging people you on again. Yeah, where's my money from the Burn Foundation? Is that what I Like farm to table, like what Megan's talking about yeah. might be something that's more localized. So those would be good to know about. But I'm not sure if you go thing, yeah. on a working calendar. Yeah. Right. Well, no, I just, what I was getting at was more just we were too, when she was mentioning grants, not so much about the, the calendar per right. se, but are we getting the support we think we need to get all the, the grants that you feel we, yeah. we, we should be getting granted for? I think, I, I think so. We usually just go to Cynthia and say we're looking we for money to do this. We had a $78,000 cut in our grant funding this year. Title funded. Title we seem funded. to get a robust amount of whatever grants, grant funds are available. I never, I don't know what you have to tell me, but I never feel like, oh, geez, Rochester, Stockbridge got shortchanged right. on this one. No, farm, uh, right, I don't feel shortchanged. I would say, like, farm to table is probably something that's uh, new. It, yeah, like, it was not just, new, yeah. but just like it sounds like maybe it's a different source, so we should pursue it. Yeah, I'll I'll just just that. I'm curious because we did because of poverty numbers and went down and and just like you, uh, I think that we were they, they changed the way they collected that information from a from a, almost a hand count to a, a, an electronic count, and I don't believe that it's been accurate. And I think we've been shortchanged because of that. And you know you were. I mean, uh, we think there's 14 kids at stake here. Uh, they're all varying degrees of worth. In other words, the preschool versus well, the high yeah. school kids versus the poverty kids. But 
you know, and only because we've spent the last two weeks. Is that a federal to, assessment for no, policy? It's state, it's state, state collection numbers. Well, the, the free reduced lunch is certainly something we have to work on. We have to we make sure about we that. get yeah, those forms to, to apply, those filled families filled to apply. Somehow, what can we do that? Okay, that's so, that's that really yeah, that's I heard, okay, so I was talking to, to somebody about this because, and I understand it totally, parents don't want to apply. Right, they're in that they're shame, okay? They, they don't shame. want to. Or so so what not. the school did was they sent out at the beginning of the month, uh, whatever it was, a statement, parents paid through the mail or gave it directly to whoever, and then everyone just got lunch. So no one knew it was free and reduced, no one knew who was paying, only, everyone just got yeah. the lunch. The only people that, and maybe high school, I know high school is a little bit different, but at the elementary level, the only people who know are the parents that qualify and myself and Janet would occur, no, the, kids don't, the, the kids, kids don't, don't, the kids don't they just money. go through the line and, yeah. Yeah, they don't have a and card Janet right. just yeah. checks off who so got lunch and then do? it gets to entry. I mean, well, I, I, some some school them. districts, uh, some schools, uh, when the parents come in for the first, you know, like if you have like an opening picket or something like that, they try to get the, the paperwork filled out there or, or send it home there, you know, and try to get it back. The thing is, we want people to fill it out because then we can do the rest once right. they do that. Because we need to know who's eligible and who isn't eligible. Can we reframe it? Can they send it directly to the SU if they don't? If they're worried that people might? It's not so much that they they think somebody's going to see it. There's just yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to buy this. It's a stigma more than so I'm afraid. Can we repackage it system. somehow so that it's? I don't know, but we've got to get a better way. I've called Some a couple tough families at Rochester who historically have never applied, had great conversations with the mom in both cases, but she just said, we simply don't accept charity. She sees it as charity. And she was very polite, very respectful, but that isn't what we do. Can't argue with that. Yeah, so I don't know how you, I don't know that you can repackage that. There's other kids that we just simply have to get on top of. That's another thing that happens. I don't think it happens in Stockbridge as much as Rochester. We had some pretty significant balances. Um, and we're just going to have to be a little more uh, aggressive. aggressive in trying to collect them. Um, or not like send out the whole package. Can we, can we word it? Sorry, well, these are all the paperwork you need to provide for your child to come to school. What if everyone fills one out? Right. Yeah, why just make they the all get sent home. No, you're not, you're not they all get sent home. And just well, you have to, to fill out your emergency form. What if form? everyone gets the same form to fill out and we just know that certain that's not, all it's all not a mandated form for your child to be enrolled in school. They also have to put down some sensitive information on how much they make. Social security all, the parents, all the parents get it that it goes home with them. It's just yeah, that they I've don't fill it, it out. Yeah. yeah. We've even Was it always this laborious for always? What do we do? Well, I think we need to get the word out that it, 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 it affects our tax rate because how it can help. Maybe that's it. That's what I said. We can't have science conversation. Oh, sorry. It doesn't work. Well, and just is this a question? I'm sorry. I know we're right in the middle of it, but I'm trying to keep us. It's 2.35, yeah, so is it. this, I love all our conversations. Okay, this, we can talk about this in our meeting, yeah, actually. Yeah, because no, is it part of the retreat? Yeah, so no, the retreat is closing remarks and open discussion. Yep. I, and I not that open. Right, sorry. <laughs> and I just felt like we have a lot of I had five seconds moves. left on my timer. Okay. I was about to go off, so good well, thing. Uh, I think uh, for the closing remarks and open discussion, we should kind of make sure we all understand what the next steps are that we're doing with what, what well, they Well, and also, I, I think it's always a good thing to go back and what stuck with people from today. You know, what's sort of the thing you're, well, you're walking out with? Well, you asked me to collect this information, and I haven't had a chance to go You haven't, with you it. haven't. I mean, I've been, I, I looked we should have it. done it at the beginning, but I looked it through is, it. I'm sorry about the extra pages in a couple of Do you have much more of those, Bruce? Yeah. Um, statistics, right? Yeah, I, I basically used, uh, there was, in, it was in my odds and ends actually, um, information from the uh, Burlington Free Press um, uh, article that just came out about two months ago about this. For some of these, the others are pretty much germane to us and the state. Um, so if you go to the first one, I think we pretty much explained 
the numbers and where they're projected to go. If you could see the light line, this is Vermont Public School enrollment, historical data and projections. The uh, darker line is the uh, history and the lighter line is where they project that it's going to go over the next kind of 10 years or so. Um, we're following, uh, the next one is some of the towns around Vermont that, that are up in, in population and others are down. I dispute Royalton. I'm not sure it's as rosy in Royalton as it and may look on here. Unless you have the Vermont Law School stays and business. Yeah, well, you know, and they've, been, they've had some hard times. Yeah. We haven't gotten some of the families that we had. But Bennington declined that much? what it said. Mm. Bennington the, College is Bennington College is closed. Well, no, yeah. no, no, they're not Bennington College. Uh, yeah. I'll say my say Southern. No, Southern Vermont. Well, this is yeah. under 18, so it shouldn't be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The job. Oh, okay. so, yeah, that's true. Wow. So the next one uh, is the towns with the biggest uh, gains in their childhood population, 13 through 17. Um, uh, like I say again, the Royalton one I was surprised at. I'm not sure it's right, but. Um, Where is this coming from the VSBA? This came from a Burlington Free Press uh, article that came out, and uh, some of it was census stuff, some of it was uh, VSBA, some of it was um, the uh, Agency for Education. Um, and then they have the uh, ones that lost the greatest numbers, which are Bennington, Butler City, Wilton, Pittsburgh, Randolph, and Linden uh, on the next next place. Uh, we do have, the, Wendy and, and Bonnie did the work on our own schools to see where that is. Um, there's another one here. Um, it gives a little more current data instead of the big picture one that was in the beginning. These are the FT, FT, FT uh, full-time equivalents, uh, FTEs, uh, student count from 96 to 16, and how that went. You can see it's just hovering above 80,000 kids in the state now. Um, and here, we, uh, we got some of the information from the um, AOE, uh, the base education rate, and what that is is the average of the schools in the state and what it is. Uh, this isn't high schools, these are all schools uh, in, in uh, average doubt that the base education rate is $10,130. The contract renewal date growth limit is, uh, let's say, if we had to if we had a multi-year contract with a bus company and we wanted to decide whether or not we would work with them uh, to continue that contract, if it was over 2.7%, we could we had to rebid. You have to stay under that 2.7 if you want to continue a contract with somebody. If you is go that over the same with the teachers? No, no, it's not. But this is more or less stuff, you know, that we uh, that we and we support, had to support. Be, Support employees, or is that no, no, no? That's not. It just this is like, like stuff we buy. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And so that 2.7 is is the number that if we go beyond that, and this year the bus company's rate of increase was wow. almost 10 percent. So, and they didn't want us to. They didn't want to talk about continuing because it would have had to be that or under in order for them to do that. They were saying, look. We're bringing in new buses, we're improving things, and we can't stay with that number. I, I don't want to make the bus company the scapegoat here, but that's one of the things that comes to mind is when this is. is Do we, is there such a number like this for teachers contracts and support contracts? Well, we have certainly where it's been running. Uh, in our How much was the increase per yeah, negotiation? Each, uh, uh, the last couple of contracts for us have been around the 2.9%. Range. I think it might be on. Is that later on. per year, or is that in the whole contract? In here, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's in there. A little it's farther it's along. Back, so back. Oh, okay. just to finish up this statewide thing, the pre-K tuition oh, uh, is uh, 2,356. That's what the state will kick in for the preschool students. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is current data as of yes, today. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. 
Uh, and then, of course, you know about the excess branding threshold. Uh, but that's more. Just thought I. So that's more because it's a uh, new year. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is all current stuff. Then we, uh, you wanted to know a little bit about the uh, price index, uh, and I tried to get a, an idea about um, uh, what that is. Uh, it's over uh, the years percentage change. Oh, I see. Um, and this is uh, 16 through 19, and how it's changed. The dotted line is if you take food and energy out of that, it, it, it's, you can see the difference. Uh, of that, so I think you asked for the CPI. Mm -hmm. So uh, moving right along, um, we wanted to, one of the um, one of the indexes that the state uses is the New England Economic Partnership Government Goods and Services Index, uh, and so this gives you, I think, how many years of this? Ten, twelve. Uh, an idea of how that, this is not people, these are things, government things, goods and services that uh, are purchased and what it's been uh, and the average we put at the bottom so that you can see what all those things total up to. So, um, I also have, uh, well, yeah, uh, you wanted a little, a uh, little bit of information on heating oil and and that kind of thing and where that's been. So I did include that in the back. It's a little light, but uh, you can see uh, how that's been through 2014 and then back up. Yeah, 2014 to uh, January 2019, uh, and how that's gone uh, October through March. That's uh, heating oil and propane. And uh, let's see. Yeah, cost of living increases. Um, each one of the state employees are in a different group. I know that um, Section D, of course, it's C, is judge. Uh, Section D is judges under state employees. Section C is uh, emergency personnel, uh, state police. Um, I think teachers are B, or they may be just uh, like the state that. workers there. I had to look some of this up because I wasn't really familiar, but teachers have three different groups. Uh, the ones that are group A are probably the ones that date back to entering the system back in the 80s, and they have their own uh, group for the time that they were employed. And then uh, more recently, um, B and C have been involved. So. Yeah. And then municipal employees, uh, and they've got their own uh, group status, and a lot of it has to do when they served, when they were employed. Uh, that's how that works. Our, our support staff at the school, municipal employees? No. Uh, they're they're uh, in with the teachers. They are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're not in the same categories of teachers, but they're in the, they have their own. Uh, category within there. If you sort of added, and this is what I was getting to, and thank you for all of this. This is great yeah, information. Is great. Um, the, the thing I was getting at was if we added all these percentages together, or and I wouldn't know exactly how to do that, but the idea that then we could look at our budget and sort of go boom, 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 projecting out four or five years what are the fixed costs, or at least the ballpark fixed costs that we have no control over that are gonna be handed to us. And that's sort of the next step with this, is that I would love to just see what that, what what the totals of each, do you hear what, you hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just that way, because it sounds like it's so much a part of what we're talking about, understanding what the future yes, is. And if, and if we know some of it, Let's know it now. Let's yeah. let's 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 know it now. I'm looking for health insurance. I thought I had a page on here that had health insurance on it. I didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah. I well, rule. I looked it up. Uh, I think our rule is it a separate? Yeah. We don't have. We have like three three. Can you give us? 
compare is between the two schools. So the other groups, there are nowhere near enough. But there would be, but certainly fuel the costs, fuel costs going up, supplies going up, food costs going up, all those things Busing, are fixed. Everything. Busing going up. These are all the things that are very much fixed right. and that we can project out. Um, teacher contract is renewed, renegotiated every three years. So uh, we're up this year. We will we will be negotiating and when school begins. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, oh, it just oh, ended. Welcome it to my world. Yeah. Is it, is it, is it every two years? Just yeah, but it was for just the last. And for the teachers, it was a two-year agreement that will, that sunset uh, sunsets. I mean, they've got one. They're going to be. This on that agreement this yeah, current right. year, but we're negotiating this current year for yeah. beyond that. And the big thing is, do we are we going to have health intentional. insurance inclusion right. or not? They asked everybody to slow down until this state health care thing got going. Oh, okay. That's I, why I, I brought this. this what's uh, the normal period between negotiations? Right. If it, whatever we did, three, whatever we come up with. Oh, okay. three oh. years, one year, two oh, years. Oh, wow. Whatever. So you can. I didn't know it was flexible. Yeah. I thought it was seven. But we were told that we really couldn't go beyond this year mm -hmm. because they're trying to do this, which is the state health insurance discussion. Um, yeah, this is uh, the NEA position. Theoretically, you can have the this. I, I made copies for you. That's all. Like you yeah. Yeah. Are they in favor of it? Yes. No, uh, well, they're. They're, they're doing their dance, uh, you know, and so is, so is this, the school districts. So I don't know whether we're ever, it's, it's really important that we know because going forward, um, we're not gonna, you know, it might be difficult if we don't know. Um, and this is, this, is the, um, this is the state's side. <laughs> this is their position. That's the NDA position, and this is the state side position. Oh, so they have two different positions. Yeah, they're they're trying to work work they're with a committee. They're, they're negotiating, negotiating it for right. themselves. Okay. I, just I have a side question. Are the support staff evaluated? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. They um, everybody's evaluated. Everybody's evaluated. That's why I told you earlier. This is the first year. I didn't know if the support staff was included in that. Anybody else want one of these? Yes, please. Uh, yes. Okay. All right, well, to, to look at his, um, he's talking about a projection. Um, I, and a takeaway, kind of what we talked about this meeting, I again go back to our youngest population, this preschool population, and I don't know um, what happened with Sarsbridge. The, the kids that were um, born in uh, 2016 are going to be our three-year-olds, 16, 17, 18, 19, right, three our three-year-olds. So um, I, there's 11 of them that were born in Rochester in 2016. Now, of course, some people move, some people come in, but just looking at what I know, then the, the year after that, there's nine of them that were born, so that would be the next yep. ones coming in, and then the year after that, there was seven. So it still is for a, a quite a population of, of children. And if our space is only for 15, but we already know of 11 births that happened three years ago, um, that doesn't leave a lot of space for anybody else to move in or, or anything. So. And the worst thing we could be doing is turning away right. pre-K and so pre -K from Granville, Hancock, yeah. it's, you know, yeah. anyone that's willing to put their kids into our side. Yeah. So like, like I said earlier, just to summarize that, the number of kids with three-year-olds we have coming in this year is great. It's 13 at this point, unless somebody's changed in the last couple weeks. Which No, it's 14, I'm sorry. Which means we will have room for one three-year-old the following year. If there will be at all status quo space. So we're going to have to find so the second space. Be, that's gonna, this is right. why we're going to have a second space. Where are we in stock group, Wendy? Um, low. I would say there's five four-year-olds and three three-year-olds. And that's not to say, Steph Colton pointed this out to me the other day, that last year, like the second week of August, we had seven kids register in Stockbridge. Right. First uh, so people aren't thinking about the, school and right. right yep. before oh, school starts. Right. They're not thinking about three and four year olds on the same calendar. They think about kids who go K six. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, 
Um, so your point being well that wasn't what you asked part for. Of, well, yeah, 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 what, yeah. what my takeaway take away? was yeah. my takeaway was that we don't have space for these guys yeah. right now and expanding. we need to make space for that expanding pre-k but for if this year our conversation if we do take away that we might be for august us. that we yeah. could say that there is room with our stockbridge campus that has a rigorous, mm -hmm. rigorous programming and it's part of our school district that you know we try to keep them in our two The only little bit of a dilemma there is some of these kids are from families that don't have transportation or the ability to go yeah, down the stockbridge. Yeah. So they yeah. will just not go. That's a little bit of a wonder. That's true. Oh, we do have a bus going every day from the, our, our parking lot at, our, at Rochester School going to South Royalton to see kids to the are sort of supposed to have someone that rides. You have someone uh, on it, and then they have to come back to the day. Oh, true, true. Um, but not that right, it comes so not that it comes so going forward. Take well, takeaways and take stuff going, going forward. Day. Okay, I have one takeaway. Yeah. Add additional yeah. room for pre-K. Um, mm -hmm. My takeaway is what I is, is is just this decision that we've got a we've got a year to make a decision about Rochester yeah, school space. I don't yeah. think we have a year. I think we have six months. Well, that's what we that's what we were talking about before that we have. But I think you're right. We need to make that decision right in six months so that the school can play, plan for the move. Right. Yep. So we have six months. And we need to plan for community meetings so that it, they don't feel like we're just telling yeah. them what we're doing. That's that's that seems to me. It's I like it because it's just it's also my takeaway because it's like a really good. We're moving. We are we're moving. We're, fine, yeah. we're moving on that. Community. That's more please, Jenny. Community meetings. Yeah. Thank you. And we don't, we didn't schedule today a meeting for the engineering study to be presented. So I don't I know if that's that already happened. Not for the general public, not in such a, anyway, sorry. The attendants are here, in case you want to know. They just drove in. Oh. Well, but what else? Well, well, let's finish with takeaways. It Sorry. did Sorry. happen in June. They came they and presented it out. one because I know I wasn't there. Right. We're not being there. They presented the whole thing, the executive summary. Yeah, yeah. it would have been June. Yeah. yeah. They presented oh, something. I missed it. I they presented it. twice, yeah. Right. That's right. I'm not sure if we were expecting a more of a presentation, though. No. Uh, okay. Not to my knowledge. No, not, I mean, they, we, they had, the, they, they, they told us that they would be willing to come to a community meeting. Yeah, okay. And, 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 okay. and be part of that if, they, if, if, if we wanted them to. Um, you know. Whether well, um, that's a good idea or not. But I think, you know, we do need to, my takeaway is that we do need to move with a quickness on this whole process because it's, it, it would be very easy for us to get, 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 get through a bunch of it and then realize we don't have time to make the decisions that we need to make for you know in a timely fashion. Yeah. I think it's I think you know saying we, we need to we need to commit to making that Rochester building decision so that it happens for next year. Building decision. You know, and we have to. It may, it may mean, like I said, I think it's it's important that we commit to, to to making that decision, and then if we can't, we can't. But rather than saying, well, we'll, we'll make sometimes. a decision and we're going to get all the information, tried. you know, that sometimes perfect is the enemy of good. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it's important that we, that, that we, unless there's some real reason to not be moving to making this decision, we need to make the decision come hell or high yeah. water. Even if we don't maybe have all our T's dotted or our I's crossed. Yep. Um, so do we need to, um, as a group, uh, do we need to go to a select board meeting in the town of Rochester to talk to the select board? Do we need to invite them to a special meeting that we have? Um, wh where is that communication? Where should we go? Um, well, I think that we need to decide that. We, I, think, I thought we said last time because we were talking about that that meeting, and we said, "Wait till this." Somebody meeting. said, "Somebody said, well, you make your decision. Leave all your options open." Right now, we own both buildings, and that we, you know, before anybody gets attached to one of the other buildings. So you're we thinking should we should, should well, it, you, we should tentatively make our decision and then approach yeah, that I mean, and say this is, a, this is the, what our board's inclination is. Right. right. Well, I think I mean, part of I mean, we, we did a good portion of that today. Yeah, yeah. That's what I felt too. I think we, we said, you know what, it really is, it looks like the high school is the, is the building that we should mm -hmm. we should be uh, making our investment in unless we come up with mm -hmm. yes. you know, some, some I, sort of compelling reason because educationally we see, you know, it's the building that doesn't need an expansion. It's the building that doesn't need a, a million dollar heating plant upgrade to, 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 to be viable. 
So, you know, for those reasons, at least the engineering study directs us towards the high school. And I'm not saying talking to them about, hey, we're ready to sell. No, more of just, this is where we are in, in our process. Gotcha. I think you gotta okay. do the community meeting first, though. I, I think, think we, we want to say Jenny. which meeting. I think we're trying to solve what we're trying to solve. Want. I think we right. need no, to. Well, that's what I'm saying. Because we say that this is where we are. Conflict we just, if they're like, no, I want this building. Right. Well, we just had a meeting. We are, you know, do, does the town see any You're value? To select board. So the select board. Does the town select board have any value in the elementary building? Because they probably need some time to do their own study and decide what their needs is, or if they have any need for no. or use for it. I'm just going to jump. I think we're trying to solve something. We don't have the rest of the people's takeaways yet. Yeah, okay. I want to make sure we're almost done with time. Sure. The rigorous literacy program and monitoring. <laughs> yeah, we need to. Aren't you surprised? That's my goal. Well, it's a takeaway. Yeah, from, a takeaway from take the meeting. Away. It's not. It's not your ongoing agenda. It's the takeaway <laughs> from. <laughs> But it's a good one. Because the whole it's time, because the whole time we were talking about everything else, you were going thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. Well, and we keep talking about seeing the testing scores, but we still haven't. That's seen why I said monitoring. Anything. That's what I meant. Well, yeah. 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 You said that by next meeting we should have. So we don't have all the to two, two, That brings me to two takeaways. One, big Wait, picture. Oh, what? <laughs> what is a viable school? But two, I think we really need to. But I think we really need to start to um, have the conversation. I don't know. We need to think about the structure of our meetings. We get in the weeds yeah. really quickly, and it's not that I don't enjoy our time together, but I feel like we then go back into the same weeds every month over. So are we going to start to move to more smaller committees like we did in the annual meeting? And then a group comes in and presents. So we can do things like give an hour and a half to look at student achievement data and still feel like the other pieces yeah. are happening without all of us staying. Being part of every. Right. right. Shortening meeting. Yeah. Efficient, 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 efficient decision making. Right, be, and and there's multiple ways. You said there's different ways to do, go about right. the way of, I don't like, have tasks, a time, tasks, time, time it. That that's it. That's all we're giving to that subject. Or like you said, if there's a need for more, well, then we need a subcommittee mm -hmm. that they need to go and bring this back to the board. That's the one thing we really haven't done I'm, much of at all is subcommittees, yeah, yeah. and it, and it really is a way. We started to last year. We had the. Education, education committee and then right. kind of like yeah. the budget. I'm just going to add to because it's kind of connected to hers. Is I'd like us to look at um, uh, this whole relationship of meetings. I'd like to figure out a way where that you guys charge Bruce and Lindy and I to do the things we've been hired to do, mm -hmm. and then you guys work on the the, the vision mm -hmm. and the goal setting and the really important conversations. Because sometimes you spend a lot of your time talking about just figuratively who's going to put the snow tires on the bus. And that's what you hire us to do. Mm -hmm. That's not how you should be spending your time. I would love a list, <laughs> a list of what we should be focused on and what we should not be focused on. Yeah, what's for? Yeah, I mean, I know they send policy us all those things. And policy and budget. Yeah. There's a whole strand called policy governance that Bruce probably knows a whole lot more about than I do. But a lot of boards are moving in that direction so they can create more time to talk about the things that are really important to them. <laughs> so who else is left for takeaway? Policy governance, there's there's a lot more trust that needs to be. Oh yeah, it's built on trust, no question about it. Before we do policy governance. The last takeaway we didn't talk about is we need to have our marketing and yes. Yes. Uh, yes. A, a plan put together, and that may well be, well, maybe should be a subcommittee as well. But figuring out be. how, you know, how we can tease out what our strengths are. I mean, obviously we can't put out a brochure talking about our incredible test scores um, this, at, at this particular yes. time. Yes. Or our main yes. campus. But um, we, we, can, we, we need to start thinking about what are the strengths that we, that we can have and what can we be saying that's positive. And then starting to collect those stories and those anecdotes so that we can put together you know, a, a, a promotional material that says, you know, this is what's great about our school. This is why you should, you know, send your kid down from, from Hancock to a school or send your kid to, from Pittsfield to here instead of Killington. Sure. Take it away. Um, well, the number one thing was the high school building. I think we're making a decision. I'm very happy that we are moving towards making more concrete actions moving forward. Um, the cost of all these repairs, I think, is my takeaway that we need to 
keep in our minds about not maybe raising the money through bonds, but trying to find money from within so we can not be putting more tax burden on our, on our community members. But mainly, I like, I'm glad we're moving in the direction of making some really big decisions about, about buildings. Bruce, take away. Um. Me, he wants me taken away. <laughs> oh, Denny, that was classic. <laughs> well, I, you know, I know that there have been uh, missteps in the past, and I, we've been set back uh, in helping all of you to get the things you need and have them correct. Uh, I, I just need time to work on new staff members to, to be to be of assistance with all of you. But from the meeting today, what's your takeaway? I think uh, you're, the biggest thing you, you've, you're working towards is uh, the facilities mm -hmm. and uh, how you're going to deal with that. I mean, we've talked at it at length. And maybe uh, the beginning of a calendar of when you're going to do things, what's most important, what's second, mm -hmm. and what's beyond that. Anybody else? Creating, I think we're creating a takeaway. We're creating a blueprint. I hope what we're doing right now for any principal, any board to come in five, ten years from now and be able to continue we'll our school and not having to start over. Right. No starting over. No more starting over. No more reinventing the wheel. Let's give them. Let's do the our due diligence right now to make it as easy as possible for our board to continue. No, 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 no. I am not. I'm seventy-five. How long? Our commitment to having these two schools, I, I want to well, I want to see I want to see them ten years from now. And we I have to be really specific now. in how we monitor this because I've seen vision statements. You know, every student will be a wonderful citizen yeah. of the world. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, I mean, we have to have specific goals that we need to. That are measurable. Yep. Yeah, that you are can't measurable. measure. You measurable should make it a goal. goal. Absolutely. And affordable. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Right. We done with this. Good. And it's nice job, everyone. Yeah.